Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy embroidery Friday. How is everyone doing? I see people are starting to get into the chat and stuff. And um, uh oh, let me um lower this down. I hope you guys can see and hear me okay. Okay, if you can't, make sure you put that in the chat. And that way I know that I'm having some technical difficulties. However, though, I think I am okay. And I wanted to start this Friday with a couple of announcements. I have about three announcements that I want to make because I know a lot of people have been reaching out to me about this. And um, let me just shut this off right here because it distracts me. And I just want to make sure that, um, you know, everybody's straight. Okay. Now, first announcement, everybody. Let's talk about the Facebook group that I got. Okay. Um, as you guys know, I have this Facebook group that's called Happy Hour Adventures. Okay. Embroidery Happy Hour Adventures. And uh, my goal of that Facebook group is to have not just subscribers, but people that are really interested in embroidery to go in there and just um, share information and help each other out when they're having issues with their embroidery machines or their embroidery project, having questions about what stabilizer to use or what, um, what thread or what size needle and what have not. So one of the things that I really want is I want that to be a really nice um, group where people can really help each other and, you know, and you know just be there for each other and encourage each other so that way we guys can you know we can all excel in our skill set in embroidery sewing and even anything else you know like sublimation and stuff like that so apparently um we i you know i've been going through the membership list and the the members the member uh list on that group has been growing quite a lot I have over, I think it's about like 3,500 subscribers, I mean, you know, to that group, which I think is great. However, though, I do want to let people know that I am scrubbing the list, okay? I do notice that we do have a couple of accounts that aren't really like true Facebook accounts. And what I mean is um, you have people that just create these phony Facebook accounts and they pose themselves as digitizers or sometimes they are digitizers or maybe they're new digitizers, I don't know. But what they do is they try to push their work to you. And, um, you know, I really want to deter from that for the simple fact that I want this group to really be a safe place, okay? And, you know, I can't guarantee that it will be, but I'm, I just want everyone to know I'm doing all that I possibly can to um, make sure that the information that is in the group is helpful, that it's safe. Um, you know, I don't want any bullying on there. And, you know, I don't want anybody to be taken advantage of either. So whenever I see that there is an account that looks phony or just doesn't look right, I do ban them from the group. And if I ever do see a post that, um, you know, someone is concerned about, I do look at them, please report them to me. And I will um, look at them and I'll view them and I will remove the post as I see fit. Um, there are, you know, the, the problem is usually the digitizers, right? There's a lot of people out there with all these phony accounts and then they come on and they say, hey, I'm a digitizer, I can do this for you. And they go ahead and then they bombard your inbox and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, there have been instances where people believe that these digitizers are true, right? And then they'll say, okay, you know, I can digitize that for you. Let me send you a bill. And then next thing you know, you send them money and you get nothing, okay? So it is kind of scary because it is kind of hard sometimes to know who you can trust and who you can't. So the one thing that I do want to talk to everybody about is, you know, please be very, very careful out there. Make sure that, you know, when you're getting references, you're getting references from people that are valid sources. Because one of the things that I notice is that what they do is they create several different dummy accounts and then they refer each, each, each other, right? So it looks like, you know, it makes you think that there are people validating for this person when in actuality, it's just a bunch of accounts that are validating for the other phony accounts. And then next thing you know, um, 
there's issues, right? Now, I do in the Facebook group under the guy tab, I do list, I believe it's three digitizers that I have on there that I have um, I have worked with in the past. And I know people that have worked with them in the past as well. And they have really come highly recommended and um, you know they do good quality work. Their prices are fair. So those are the ones that you know I do have on that list. So if you're looking for a digitizer, I strongly recommend. Um, unless you you know someone that you are comfortable with, and that's great. But if you're new to the game and you really don't know anyone, then I highly encourage that you know you probably take a look at the ones that I kind of recommend because I have worked with them in the past and I know they're really good and I know they're honest people. You know, I can actually vouch for them because I, you know, they have never done anything to me. And I've also recommended them to several other people as well. And they've had very positive experiences as well. So, you know, I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of that because I really want that space to be um, a great place for you to learn, to grow and really have a great time and share things and you know participate and i want people to be it safe okay so i just wanted you guys to know um you know that because i know that there was a lot of conversations in that facebook group and i just really wanted to hammer that down okay now the other thing that i wanted to talk to you guys about before we go into tonight's topic which tonight's topic is going to be talking about embroidery designs okay and um, I want to talk to you guys um, before we get into that is I got in the mail uh, the uh, agenda for the original sewing and quilt expo that's coming in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I know there is like last year I went and I attended with Miss Banks and I had the pleasure of meeting some of you guys at the expo and we had a really, really great time. I really would love for us to try to get together again. And if you didn't have an opportunity to attend last year and you're in the area, if you live in Maryland, Virginia, or somewhere close to Fredericksburg, Virginia, this is really a good place to go. I mean, this does, I mean, I know it says sewing and quilt, but they do have embroidery as well. If you're looking for like different machines, I mean, you know, everyone was kind of cracking up because when I saw the machines, I was just like, oh my God, look at all those machines. They're like, awesome. They have them set up on tables and you can actually sit in front of the machines and you can try them out. So if you are in the market for a sewing machine or even an embroidery machine, because they had embroidery machines there and you, you know, you just have not had an opportunity to get hands on, right? Which I'm, you know, which is something that I kind of like really recommend because the thing is when you are buying a machine, right? And I've done videos on this topic before in the past. One of the things that I always say is I want to make sure that when you are getting a machine, that it's a machine that you truly feel comfortable with. There's a lot of different brands out there. Um, you guys that have watched me know that I am not one that I'm going to push a brand, okay? Like I do use brothers but i don't push them i'm not affiliated with them i'm not affiliated with any of the um name brands sewing machines embroidery machines stuff like that um and i you know i tell you what i like about the machine um i don't know much about other types of machines except what i've heard but i have um, done videos in the past where i have given you guys um guidance as to questions um to ask when you're looking for a machine things to compare when you're looking for a machine, um, you know, regarding pricing, support. Also, um, you know, think about the functionality when you're looking at machines, you know, what is it that's going to work for you, okay? Not the p other people that you talk to that have them, okay? Because I, um, as you guys know, I am one that I really believe in individualism, okay? Especially when it comes to creativity, all right? Because think about it, if we were all the same, there would really be no creativity, right? Because everyone brings their own little 
art and um, niche into everything that we do, whether it's sewing, embroidery, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, everyone's going to have their own needs, okay? Just kind of like, you know, I have um, my Etsy shop, right? And a lot of people have Etsy shops out there, and a lot of people do embroidery. But their embroidery is such a big range that there are so many different things that you can do and create and sell that you have to find your niche, okay? And when you know what it is that you want, that is when you know what functionality it is that you're going to really need. And when you have an idea of not only what you want to do, but if you have an idea of other areas that you want to explore into, that's going to help you make a really good decision to get a machine that was going to grow with you and your dreams. So, you know, um, like I said, in here, they do have some vendors that come out they bring the machines with them and they have them set up. And, you know, the technicians are there. You can ask a whole bunch of questions. You can even sit there and they will stitch stuff out, show you the mechanics of it, and you can even feel it. And so that way you can see if, if it's something that you want, okay? Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a really good place to go if you are looking to get information, right? Um, you know, so it's just something that um, I went last year it was my first time ever going. And I have to tell you, I really, really liked it. I mean, it's it's like now this year, you know, I went just the last day. Right. Because um, when I went with Ms. Banks, she said she loved to go the last day because that's when you really get the good deals, because she says. Um, she wanted things that, which kind of made sense, right? Um, it's, she was saying, you know, a lot of the vendors, they go, they have machines, they want to sell them or people that have fabrics and stuff that they want to sell. A lot of times what happens is on, on the last day, right before they close, sometimes they'll even cut deals because the vendors really don't want to like lug everything back and put everything back in their car and take it back to their place, right? So sometimes you can get some really good deals. I, I mean, sometimes you can't, but it doesn't hurt to try. So what we did was we went the last day and some of the folks that um, we were hanging out with, they did get some like fantastic deals. Like Danielle, she got like a sewing table that was like, gosh, she, I think she got like close to 50 or 60% off. Um, you know, um, we got some really great deals on some fabrics and they had some beautiful fabrics. I mean, good quality fabrics. And when I went with Miss Banks, that's when I really learned the difference between cheap fabric and good fabric. OK, because, you know, when you're sewing and you start learning, you really don't pay attention to certain kind of details. And that's actually where I really learned a lot. I really learned a lot hanging out with her. And I hope this year we get to hang out again and I get to meet some of you guys. So I did put some of this information in our Facebook group, but, um, you know, go on their website. If you just type in original sewing quilt expo and, you know, um, look at there. And then one of the things you're also going to see, oops, and I tore it by mistake. Oh God. Okay. Well, that's okay. I'll tape it. Do I have tape? Oh, that's all right. Well, also another thing. Okay, let me just keep going. I'll tape it later. So um, when you look in here and you go on their website, they don't have all this information on there too. They also have a class schedule, right? And in here, you get to take different classes, okay, that they have. You have opportunities to learn. So like one of the things is I got sergers, right? And I really haven't been using the sergers much because I really need to learn. And they do have a class on sergers. So I know I'm going to be signing up for that one. Um, they have different um, classes where they're working on projects and they're, they teach about um, you know, sewing clothes. They teach about embroidery. Um, like I said, working on the sergers. They even have um, one class, which I thought was really interesting here. It says five zippers, five bags, one serger. And um, this one right here, I thought this was a pretty good class. So I think I'll probably sign up for that. I'm going to be looking around and seeing because they look like they have a lot of really good, interesting classes. Um, you know, so I think I may end up going all three days. I'm not sure, um, depending on what classes I see in there. So they have embroidery, they have quilting, um, they, they even have, um, you know, projects, like I said, um, let me see what else they got, what else they got, um, 
Oh, essential server skills. Here's another one. Yep. It, see, and I'm going to be looking for those. And I'm also going to be looking for some embroidery classes as well. So I just wanted to share this information with you guys in case you guys um, were interested in, interested in going and stuff. I know there is a fee to get in, um, but, you know, you don't have to take the classes, right? You, you know, when I went last year, I didn't take the classes. I just like paid the fee to go in. And then I was like looking around and you can get so many things. I mean, they had everything everything in there it was like i felt like i was in a candy store i'm gonna be honest with you okay now the only thing i'm gonna caution you guys is be careful though because you may want to go in there and want to buy everything so what i did last year was i just took like a hundred dollars cash okay and i did have my plastic but i was like i am focusing on just a hundred dollars that's it okay and i did pretty good i did pretty good i actually came back with some money. I came back, I think, with like 15 bucks, something like that. So it wasn't that bad. But um, yeah, it's a it's a really, really good uh thing. So I just want you guys to just just know about it. Okay. Um, and I know that um, you know, some of you guys have reached out because you guys do want to go and you guys want to meet up and everything like that. So as the day gets closer, I was thinking that the last day, September 30th, because of um you know that's like the last day where a lot of people get deals i guess and stuff like that i figured maybe i'll pick that day and then when i go there on the second and the first or second day i'll probably post and say hey everybody can we meet here whatever maybe we can have lunch or something like that so i thought that would be fun you know so just wanted to uh share this with you also the other thing that i wanted to share with you is i made a huge 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 mistake okay last friday okay we were talking about embroidering hats right okay so i went and i embroidered this hat and it came out really really good and i came out and i told you guys oh my god i'm going to video me making this hat again right well um I thought I, I I told myself, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make this a little thicker, okay? And I was like, I'm gonna do this. Now I did videotape the process, but I'm gonna let you know right now, this video is not gonna be titled as, you know, here this is how you do it. This is uh, it's actually going to be titled, this is how you make a really big boo boo, okay? Because this is, I mean, I screwed this one up for. I mean, I was just like. Oh, okay. And then I was trying to fix it. Okay, well, let me tell you, this is what the fix up looks like. Okay, then this is this sucks. Okay, so, <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you that this this mistake hurt. It hurt me a little bit, and I'm gonna tell you why. And and it really shouldn't hurt me because I purchased. Um, I took eighty dollars, right? And I told myself, you're gonna buy eighty dollars worth of baseball hats. And all it is is for you to practice some designs and see if you could come up with some designs and try some new techniques and all that kind of stuff, right? I said that and I told myself that. So I was mentally prepared. I said, I bought these hats and this is all practice hats, okay, for me to do that. Well, I put this hat in here and I my goal for this hat was to actually do the same hat like this, right? Now, I bought this hat because of the um, the style, right? And I wanted to make this hat for one of my closest friends whose son joined the army. Right now, he's in boot camp, and I'm hoping, you know, we're, you know, I'm, well, we're not even hoping. We know because he's just all about the army, okay? So he's, he's in his world, all right? He is his static, and we're so super proud of him. So he is in boot camp, and I believe he is going to be graduating probably around September, October, something like that, okay? So one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to hook up Patty with her army outfit, okay? Now, she's retired Coast Guard, but, um, you know, her son decided um, army, right? Because I don't know, for some reason, army was the service he wanted to go to. So um, I wanted to do a hat that was very similar to this, but I wanted it to say Army Mom, 
right? And then I figure what I can do is I can make her a shirt or a sweatshirt that says army mom, or maybe like a jean jacket or something like that, you know, make it really cute. So that, you know, when we go to graduation, we, we're all hooked up and we're there to support, um, you know, John Jr., right? You know, I was like, we're going to be like, yeah, John, you did it, right? Um, so, well, I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay, I put this sucker in there, all right? And um, when I went to do the tag down of this, it it just crunched up. It just crunched up. It folded up. I mean, it looked tacky. It was bubbly. I mean, it was it was bad. So I was like, oh, okay, well, that didn't work, right? So I came on and I said, all right, well, let me see if I can fix it. That's what I told myself. I said, I'm, I'm going to fix it, right? So um, I'm going to tell you something, fixing it doesn't work. When it comes to these hats, I, I got a feeling that um, seriously, I mean, if it's for a customer, if you screw it up, you screw it up. Don't, don't, I, I don't pass it off, Okay. Now, I will probably give it to her. I don't even think so. No, I'm not even going to give it to her. I, let me take that back. This ain't going to patty, okay? I'm just going to have to find another way to do it. And I, I'm going to be honest. It hurts me because I didn't spend a lot because I, I did get a lot of hats, okay? I got a lot. This is a prototype, and I understand that. But I am going to tell you something, okay? Whenever you work on any type of blank, all right, and you make a mistake, and even though, okay, emotionally you tell yourself, okay, Jeanette, these are samples that you, you took $80 out of your budget and you bought nothing but hats and these are just samples, okay? So it's for you to try it out, right? And you have that mentally. It is hard to throw these hats out, I'm telling you, because I'm like, this is a good hat. And then I'm like, I don't want to throw it out. So now I'm trying to come up with creative ways of how am I going to save this sucker, okay? And you best believe I'm going to find a way, okay? Because I don't like wasting. So um, I, and, and this is the other thing too. I, one, I don't know if you can see this on camera. I'm going to try to make it as close as possible. I think you can. If you look, do you see this right here? It's, it's, prep, it's perforated. See that? That is, see? Let me see if I could get a, a little pen or something like that so you guys can see it. Ah, okay. I need like a pointer. Well, see? See that? Look at that. See right there? This is where the stitches were, okay? See how it goes like that? So it's like when it makes a hole into this particular fabric, even though I, I took out the stitches and everything, it's a permanent hoe. It, it really is. It's a permanent hoe. Um, and it just doesn't look right. And, you know, the person that you give it to may not see it, may not know, but you know, so I know, I know. So it's a problem. Okay. So I'm just going to, I, I am probably maybe put a bigger patch over here and stuff like that. I'm going to find some kind of way to save this hat. And this is the thing also taking all these stitches out. It's not easy because if you look inside, okay, that's a lot of stitches. All right. And even though I could take my Peggy stitch eraser and I could go in there and I could try to get all these out, what I'm afraid of is cutting the fabric and then I really messed up the hat. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to sit on this for a little bit and I'm going to come up with some kind of solution because I, 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 I'm just not feeling throwing away these hats. So this video, I, 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 um, I was videotaping it thinking that it was going to be a success just like this. Unfortunately, it's not. Okay. So, but I am still going to post it out there, but I am going to title it. This is what you don't do. Okay. So that way, when you guys see it, you guys can say, okay, this is what she did and it didn't come out good. So don't do that. All right. So it's going to be one of those. Okay. And so it's probably going to be one of those videos where people are going to click on it and they're going to think it's a success. And then they're going to give me that thumb down because they're going to be like, Jeanette, that was a jacked up hat. But yeah, it is. Okay. Then I do have two more videos that I already filmed. I just have to edit them and I'm going to put them up tonight. Okay. I did um, kids polo shirt. The kids polo shirt is how do you do logos on kid polo shirts if you do not have a, my, a um, hooping station 
for kids polo, okay? I'm gonna show you an alternative that I use and how I did it. And um, that's gonna help you guys, especially those of you guys that do kids shirts, okay? I'm not really one that does a lot of kids attire, okay? I'm, I, I like doing the baby blankets and all that kind of stuff. But um, this, um, you know, sometimes you get a customer. Sometimes you get a customer. And these were kids polo. So I was like, all right, let me just do that. But I figured, let me go ahead and videotape that because I don't have a um, child or infant hooping station. So what I did was I used an alternative and you that video will be out there soon. Another one that I think you guys are really going to like, it's going to be really, um, it's going to be a learning video. And that's this one I'm going to be posting tonight, too. And it's talking about small fonts and patches. OK, um, you know, small, you know, the I'm in the video is it's, you're not going to be seeing me doing an embroidery or anything like that. You are going to see me putting in a patch over a garment where the embroidery did not really come out that great because of the tiny so you guys will see that video and, and it, it's it's a really good video because it focuses on small fonts, the type of fabric that you're embroidering on, what size needle you need, what is the weight of the thread that you need, and also when you are embroidering and you see that it did come out good, it's a great alternative to offer your customers, okay? Because um, sometimes, you know, things you know, people ask you to embroider stuff. And even though sometimes you kind of say, I don't know, you know, because that's really what happened in this particular case. It was a very, very small font. And I wasn't comfortable with that small font. They did increase the size of the font. But the thing is, it, if they increased it anymore, it was going to kind of like shape out of the um, the logo. Okay, it was, it was kind of going to change the logo a little bit. The customer didn't want to do that. So they were very adamant about, no, no, it'll be fine. And then when they gave me the vest and I saw the quality, I was like, you know, this really isn't going to be fine. But they were adamant about it. So I was just like, okay. And you guys know how I am. Um, those of you guys that watch me, I do not like items that come out of this shop that is half anything, okay? It has to be prestige, okay? And and I I, I am very, very add a bit about that especially if any of you guys have an embroidery business you have to make sure and i and i don't i i just can't stress this enough when you are working on customer orders okay and you are embroidering something that has to be top notch in quality embroidery don't let it walk out the door looking half baked or anything like that okay because that is a representation of you that product is going to be talking about you when it walks out that door okay you know i mean it represents you it represents your shop it represents your brand it's talking okay so you don't want anything out there looking a mess so um you know in that video i do explain that and you know i showed the alternative and um you know that ended up being a very good win-win situation for me and the um the um client the you know the, the the client um client was very happy with the outcome so i will definitely be posting that video so that you guys can see what you can do if something just doesn't come out right okay how you can kind of change a bad situation into a win-win situation all right because like i said reputation means everything it really does so you know trust me you really want to do that so you know, wow, I talked a lot for the announcements, didn't I? Okay, but let's talk about um let's talk about some fun stuff now. Okay. We're gonna be talking about embroidery designs. All right. And um the reason why I wanted to talk to you guys about this, actually, it, it's probably because of what happened in the Facebook group with all the digitizers that came out of the, the woodwork and all that kind of stuff. And I said, you know what? Let me talk to you guys about quality embroidery okay um and i'm gonna you know start this off by letting you know what it is that i actually look for when and i have a couple of notes in here 
And I figured also I can share my screen and I can also, we can even shop for embroidery designs together. So you guys can see what it is that I look like, that I look for. I even got in brilliance up also so that we could even look at some designs together. Okay. And um, maybe I can show you some tricks of how to fix certain things. Okay. So let's talk about this. Okay. So when you, I am, you know, when Jeanette is out there, okay. And I said, you know what, I, I want to put some new products in my shop, or I want to create some new stuff. What is, and I'm looking for new embroidery designs. What is it that I actually, um, you know, look for? right when i'm when i'm um looking for uh embroidery designs now there you know there's a as you as you start getting into the world of embroidery one of the things that i want you know i want to stress is you as as you become more experienced you really start learning and knowing how things should really be properly stitched out okay um, one of the things that I do is I make sure that the design, okay, and this is something that I highly recommend everyone does, okay, whether you are getting a um, design digitized, or even if you just bought a design, never assume, and I'm serious about this, never assume that, um, you know, that the, the file that you get is good. Don't do that, okay? You have no idea how many times, you know, I've received a file and there was some tweaking that needed to be done with it or the file was not digitized correctly or it was just really poor. Or And, you know, and I thank goodness that what I did was I took the design and I stitched it out on a piece of fabric before I actually put it on a customer's product, okay? Like this is just, you know, so, but I think it's an example. You guys know what I mean. If somebody comes to you and says, hey, here's a shirt and I want you to put this design on it, test stitch it. Now, I notice that sometimes people do not test stitch the design for the simple reason that, you know, they feel like, oh, I'm wasting a lot of thread or, you know, it takes time to test stitch. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to regret it if something happens. All right. You really, truly are. You're going to hit yourself and, and you're going to be like, why didn't I do that? You know, now I ruined the shirt or now I ruined the jacket and, and so forth. OK, now, what are some of the things that um, that I find that I'm actually looking for? OK, when I look, get a new design and I put it in the machine, one of the things that I actually look at is, first of all, I look at how the machine is stitching out the design. I want to see if they have how many jump stitches, okay? Are the jump stitches that are there necessary or are the jump stitches just there, okay? And the, the digitizer did not take the time to remove necessary jump stitches. There have been lots of designs that have gotten there where I had to literally sit there with a pair of scissors and every time a certain portion of that design is done in bordering and it goes to the next area of the design i have to take a pair of scissors and i have to actually snip it okay and that is very time consuming okay now if you have a single needle machine like the sc1900 that does not cut jump threads so unfortunately you're gonna have to do that but if you have a multi-needle machine a lot of times the multi-needle machine should be cutting those jump stitches okay so you shouldn't have a lot of jump stitches in your design the other thing that I sometimes find is skipped stitches, okay? Sometimes, you know, sometimes though the, the, the skipped, the, you know, if you see that a design is skipping some stitches, sometimes it, it could be your machine. So one of the things that I recommend doing is test that design a second time, slow down the machine, because sometimes machines do do that. It will skip stitches if you're running it a little bit too fast. OK, so that's just um, something else to look at. All right. Um, see, let me see. Uh, what else do I look for? OK, when you are looking at um, the embroidery designs, and this is something that I do, especially if I buy the embroidery designs right off of Etsy. OK, read the reviews. A lot of times I find people don't do that, okay? They don't take the time to read the reviews. And when you read the reviews, don't just look at reviews and say, great stitch out, That's and that's it. 
What you want is you're looking for the reviews that are in, are, are in detail, and you also want to see reviews that have pictures in it, okay? Because if you have a particular design and the design is, is costing you seven, eight bucks, that's pretty expensive, right? So you wanna make sure that when you get that design that it actually stitches out the way you expect it to be, all right? So look for the reviews, look at pictures and stuff like that. And then also, you know, reach out to the seller of that embroidery design and ask them, you know, ask them questions, you know, does this, it, it, you know, does it cut the jump stitches and stuff like that? You would be surprised that a lot, a lot of the sellers, they will reach back to you and, and, and they'll work with you, okay? Um, there have been times also when I have purchased embroidery designs, had so many jump stitches, or it had areas where it was supposed to be filled and it wasn't filled, okay? It didn't stitch out correctly. And I reached out to the digitizer and I asked them about it and I'll send them a pic they will fix the design for you and send it back to you, okay? And a lot of times, if you see that they do not fix that design and send that back to you, that is your opportunity to actually write a review and say, hey, cute design, however, did not really stitch out the way it was supposed to, reached out to the seller and never heard back. You know what I'm saying? You know, because you got to remember, you know, you, you want good quality products and you want to make sure that, you know, when you leave those reviews, believe it or not, you're actually helping other people that do embroidery as well, okay? Because if you find a design out there that sucks, you know, you don't want other people to be spending their money and buying these designs that suck too, right? So, you you know, so we kind of like helping each other out in the community and stuff like that, okay? Now, another question that a lot of people ask me is where do you get your designs all right now i want to show you guys and i don't want to share my screen right now because one of the things that i want to do is i want to show you something um let me see am i sharing yes i am oh good okay now what i am going to do and you know what? I am going to make sure, because I know I saw my sister is on the chat. So um, she will text me if I'm screwing up and you guys can't see what I'm talking about, right? Because I can't really see. I don't have my other computer up. I could have it up, but, you know, it distracts me. Okay, so anyway, so I just want to focus here. So if, you know, I, I know that there are a lot of, guys, there are so many, oh, sorry, Mel, there are so many embroidery software uh, out there, okay? Now, I like in Brilliance, okay? It's just a preference for me because you guys know I'm a Mac girl. I love my Apple products. But there are a lot of things out there. There's stuff like So What Pro, there's Hatch. There's, there's a lot of different softwares out there. So just like um, embroidery, uh, you know, machines, you know, I... I can only, you know, I, I really, well, I do have an affiliated link with the Brilliance. I'll tell you that right up front, okay? But, you know, I like to be fair and I don't want to like really push, push, okay? I know I like it. And when I do the videos, I, I'm using it Brilliance, okay? So if you like what you see, awesome. You know, you know, I, it'd be great if you could use my affiliated link to buy it. But, you know, before you do buy it, one of the things that I strongly recommend, you know, because I, I really truly believe in being fair, is it Brilliance does have a free version, okay? Go there, try the free version, because just like a embroidery machine, okay, not every embroidery software is for you, okay? Just because it works for someone and they find it user-friendly and stuff like that, that doesn't mean that this is going to be something that you may like, okay? So please, you know, just do your research and all that kind of stuff so that way you can get what's best for you, as always, okay? But, however, what I'm going to show you isn't going to cost you guys a dime, okay? You can go to this embroider um, this website, okay? Go to embroilers.com, okay? You're not getting anything, all right? All you're going to do is you're going to go down here and, and see where my, my, uh, my cursor is. I'm going to click, where is it? Right here, right under connect. It says right here, it says BX font designer. I want you to click on that, okay? Now, when you click on this, what this does, and I've shown you guys um, this in the past, 
But, um, you know, I might have some new people watching me that don't know about this. When you go to this, this at particular tab of embrilliance.com, one of the things that they do is they have a whole list of designers and websites, okay, that offer embroidery files, okay, um, particularly BX file. BX files is, is uh, something that you would buy for fonts so that way you could easily import it in Embrilliance. And I have a video showing you guys how to do that, okay? So if you go down the company name right here, it has the name and here it has the website. You can go to any of these sites and these are very good sites. These are rep reputable. I don't know if I'm saying that word right. Okay, y'all know my Spanglish and stuff like that. But these are very good websites and they have gorgeous designs, different prices and all that kind of stuff. So I highly encourage you guys, you know, take a look. There's, there's just so many. See, I'm scrolling down so that you guys can take a look and see. And you know what? Let me go on YouTube to make sure because I, yeah, my phone can sometimes act a little funky. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that I turn this down. And that way I can make sure that I see what you guys see. Okay. So that way they, okay, great. All right. You guys can see it. All right. So as you can see, I'm scrolling down. And, you know, they have so many, okay? I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And I'm telling you, it's it's beautiful, beautiful designs, applique designs, all, all kinds, all kinds, all right? So this is one place where you guys can go and get a whole bunch of different, in, um, you know, embroidery designs, all right? Now, um, let me see, let me see, let me see. All right, here we go. Okay, so that is one spot. Now, there are other websites out there that you can go to that will, um, you know, that you can, that are very, you know, very good for buying certain um, sites. And let me, let me lower this because this is distracting. I'm watching myself over here. Okay, so anyway, um, like another one, when it comes to fonts, think about stitchtopia.com. I really like them. Okay, I really like them. They have tons of fonts they sell a lot of B bx fonts also um you know go on etsy look at the reviews they have tons of beautiful designs okay and i'm gonna try and see if i can go on etsy right here um let me see hold on see if i can if i can um you know because sometimes when you do that. I think I'm going to do entire screen. I'm going to share entire screen. Can I do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on here and I think you can see. And then this is a design that I was looking at too, because my cousin's looking to give somebody a um, present and let me go in here and I'm going to minimize this here for me. So that way I don't get all confused. All right, all right. Well, this is my Etsy shop, but I don't sell any embroidery designs, okay? But I want to look in here. Now, let's say that we are looking, like right now, I am um, looking at uh, mermaid designs. Let's say that you're doing baby blankets and stuff like that, right? So I'm going to type here mermaid, if I can spell, mermaid <laughs> embroidery designs. Okay, and you hit enter. Okay, look at all these beautiful designs that you can get. All right, now one of the things, like I said, you know, when you are shopping here, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you read the reviews. Okay, now here is one shop I really like her shop. Her shop is um very, very uh, you know, I, I don't want to say her, 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 well, I don't want to say the word cheap, but uh, they're affordable. Embroidery designs, if you look right here, look at that, 18 bucks, $25. Oh, that's the shirt. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go to the designs here. All right, scratch that. Okay, look at the, Well, look at these beautiful designs. Look at that, mermaids. This is $3.51. Some are $3. These are cute designs. This is a cute one, too, for mermaids and stuff. I think mermaids are coming back. I'm not sure. But as you can see, some of these designs, very, you know, very good. 
read the reviews, okay? Read the reviews. Make sure that you are reading the reviews and you're looking at it. Um, you know, I know I recently um, purchased, which one did I purchase? Um, I, which one did I purchase? Hold on, I bought one really cute this one i got I, I recently got this one i thought it was really cute you can see it, nine people have it and i thought this would be really cute for a uh, baby blanket that you know my cousin wants to make to give to somebody and i was able to change out the 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 thing i haven't stitched it out yet so i'm going to do a test stitch on it um but you know look if you read the reviews right here stitch it out look fantastic but you could tell this is not the design okay so Usually what I'll do is I'm looking for a um, review of the actual embroidery design that I purchased. If I don't see something, then I'll, I'll take a chance. But at the same time, I do look at all of their reviews and I like to see the pictures, okay? Because the pictures kind of tell you if they really are good quality or not, right? So, um, yeah, so, you know, really cute designs okay um let me take that one out all right so let's talk about the different types of embroidery designs while i have this up there so that you guys can uh you know get an idea of the different types of embroidery designs that are pretty pretty popular now one is called the applique applique design is when you're using fabric or you're using um vinyl or some type of material instead of thread to fill a large space all right like for instance we're gonna look at this one right here this is actually um an applique i've done this one as an applique i don't know if this really was an applique maybe i just screwed up the design okay so <laughs> that's a bad example let's keep going all right so all right guys let me get it together here we go is this an applique Yes, it is. And it even says it. Some will say applique and some, and look, zigzag. Okay, see how right here it says zigzag? What does zigzag mean? Zigzag means the edging. Okay, um, let me get this out here. The edging of the applique. Okay, which is if you look at the tail right here, okay, that's a zigzag. All right. And then as you can see, this inside of the mermaid, that's fabric. Okay, these are really, really good because it saves you money on um, on thread. However, though, the disadvantage is if, even though you're saving money on thread, you're spending money on fabric and you're also spending money on heat and bond light. All right. So sometimes you really got to kind of like, look, where where is it you want your expense to be? And where do you want to save money? Okay. I like the applique designs. I think they're really cute. The drawback also with the applique designs, if you're selling them, is you got to make sure that you have enough fabric in stock to be able to sell so that it could look exactly how you're displaying it. Even though you do have the flexibility to change the fabric, but you got to make sure the customer is aware of what they are getting. All right. There's another one is the full embroidery. Now, full embroidery is when you're looking at designs that are similar to this. Okay, this is an actual embroidery design where it the whole thing is nothing but thread. You don't add any fabrics, not an applique or anything like that. The whole design is nothing but thread. Okay, I actually like those, but you have to be very, very conscientious of the type of embroidery file that you buy. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about that about um the uh the full embroidery okay there are different types of full embroidery design design files okay you have some that are very dense now what does dense mean dense means that you have and i'm looking around okay i can't find it but okay you know what um dense is when you have it, it's it's a solid and it has a lot of stitches piece let, let me share the screen again and let's 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 see if i can show you what a dense embroidery design looks like okay here let's instead of that let me do uh kitchen kitchen designs 
Sometimes those can be uh, pretty, uh, oh, not kitchen designs. Oh my goodness, guys, embroidery designs. There you go. All righty, all right, let's look at this. Uh, let me look down, let me look down, let me look down. All right, here we go. Let's get cooking. This is dense. Now, why do I say that it's dense? I say that it's dense because look at that. All of this right here. Oh, well, it, it changes the uh, thing. This comes in different sizes. But anyway, I wish um, I could point at it. But look at the cutting board, okay? The cutting board itself is dense. There is a lot of stitches to fill in that entire cutting board. Now, one of the things that you have to consider when you are going to be using an embroidery design that is like this, that's very dense, is you have to think about the fabric that you are going to be putting this design on. You do not want to put this on thin fabric. Now, there, you know, this is a design that will usually be used for kitchen towels, right? So I will not put this on. They have these, uh, what did they call it? It's like, I think it's like a tea, no, flower sack towel, something like that. And what it is, is it's just a towel that's um, pretty thin. This will not work for that towel. You can do it, but it's not something that I think would be wise to do for the simple fact that when you wash it, it's not going to be very attractive coming out. It's going to be really difficult for the customer to, to keep it. You know, you're going to have to put um, cutaway stabilizer. You're going to have to really stabilize the crap out of this design. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, these types of design, you want to put them on thick, fabric. So what I would do for that is, you know, I like to use these towels. These are Terry, Terry towels. Okay. And, um, you know, they're thick. That works great on these type of towels. All right. If you're going to use the flower sack towel, which is like very thin. Okay. Um, that's not going to work. So you have to make sure that when you are buying embroidery designs, that you kind of understand what type of full embroidery design you are buying, okay? And how you intend on using that design, the type of fabric that you're going to be putting it on and stuff like that. So always keep that in mind when you're buying these, all right? Now, there is another type of design that um, people buy, and I'm going to show you right here. And it's called, I think it's called Red, red Work um, Embroidery. Yeah, Red Work Embroidery Designs. Now, these designs are pretty cool, okay? Um, I like them. These are not considered, um, you know, dense designs, all right? If you really look at it, like, let's take a look at this design. As you can see, they're not dense, all right? Usually, it's just, like, one color, and as you can see, it's mostly an outline. Okay, there really is no fill into that. So these types of designs would be good on a flower sack uh, towel. I hope I'm saying that right, but you guys, I hope I, you you guys know what I'm talking about, all right? You, they would be good on the the towels that are pretty thin because it's not really a dense design. So these would do well on that. You can even put these on a thick design as well. However, though, one thing that I do caution about this is if you look closely on here, you notice that it's just an outline, right? These are outline designs, okay? So one of the things is make sure you know your material, your fabric. Because it's outline, you don't want these stitches to sink into your fabric. You want them to stand out. So to me, if you take that and you were to put this on here, it'll look okay, but I would make sure that I would use a um, water-soluble topper on it so that you can give those stitches a lift, all right? And um, I don't know, I but to me personally, this is not the type of design that I would put on a piece of fabric that is plush. I really wouldn't do it because I don't think that it's going to look great long lasting. I could be wrong, but I wouldn't chance it, especially with a customer. Okay. Because remember when things leave your embroidery business, 
that actually represents you. So if I'm not sure about something, I will test it out and I will wash that sucker five or 10 times to make sure that it still looks good before I actually do that. Now this, I wouldn't even bother on, on a flower sack. I, I hope I'm saying it right on the thin towels, the thin kitchen towels, because I know that that's going to be fine. Okay. So this is another embroidery design that, you know, it's pretty popular and it, you know, works really well. Now there's another one too that I have been exploring with, and I've been doing this with dinner napkins lately. And I, I um, made a set of dinner napkins for my cousins in Ohio and um, it's cross stitch embroidery. And let me show you what that looks like. All right. Now, cross stitch um, embroidery, usually a lot of times people used to do that by hand, right? Look at this. This is machine, machine cross stitch file. These are cute. These are really, really, really cute. Okay. Um, I wish I could make it big. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, awesome. All right. So these are really, really nice. Um, a lot of people like this kind of stuff. I think this is a really cute, um, cute thing to put on dinner napkins. I think this is really, really cute. Um, you know, but these are just the fonts. Okay. But let me go in here and let me show you um, cross stitch embroidery, machine embroidery, sorry, machine embroidery designs a design all right let's see if they have because they do have some really cute ones they have um i have seen some designs look at this one right here this is pretty this is pretty okay this is pretty popular okay um a lot of people do like them however though that is one thing that that i will tell you you don't find a lot of these out there you really don't these are pretty cute for kitchen towels and stuff like that the designs are not too dense okay and they're not exactly too much on the light side either i kind of consider these designs to be kind of like in the middle okay and they will work with um terry uh, kitchen towels, and they will also work with your um, the thin uh, kitchen towel as well. I think it's the flower sack or something like that. So, um, but see, that one's cute. Um, let's see, let's go back and let me see what other designs they have. Uh, let's see, let's see, because I, I see some more. Um, no, that's just a cross. That's not cross machine. Um, yeah, but as you can see, they don't have too much. They really don't. Here's another one. Here's some roses. Okay. Those are kind of cute. You know, um, you know, you could probably, you know, do something like that with dinner napkins, stuff like that. But this is like pretty, pretty um, popular as well. Now, let me show you another one that I kind of like. Um, and it's called uh, Sketch Machine Embroidery Designs. I like these because they are also not very dense. They're they're light. Okay. Now, these are one of the things that I, you know, that I like about them is I want you to look real close. Let me see if I can do that. Okay. Notice how the stitching is on these types of files, okay? They're not a fill. Okay, a lot of times people buy these and then they think, oh my God, there's something wrong with the file because it's not filled in. It's not supposed to be filled in, okay? You're supposed to have those little spaces in there, okay? Um, what I like about these is that, like, again, they're not dense. They're not dense files, you know, um, they do save on thread and, you know, this you can use on thin fabric and, um, you know, the thing is with these, though, I caution you not to um, actually put them directly on plush fabric. And I'm going to tell you why. Because this is not filled, okay? Because if you look, look at the letter N and you see how it has all these spacings. If you have something like with fur 
that has like fur and stuff like that, you're going to get the fur eventually. It may not look that way when you first take it out of the machine. But as time goes on and that item is moved around and everything, you're going to get fur or the little um, fuzz and stuff like that to come up between these, these lines. Because remember, this is not filled. Okay. And if you guys have watched my videos in the past, you guys know that whenever I am working on some type of fabric that is um, very plush, okay, or has some like, you know, fur or stuff like that, one of the things that I always recommend is to add knockdown stitches, okay? Because knockdown stitches is what's going to actually create that flat first, uh, surf surface so that nothing comes up between the design. That is a sketch design. So it's not supposed to be filled, all right? A lot of times people buy that. And then when they buy it, they, they right away, they're like, oh, this didn't stitch out right and stuff like that. But it's because they didn't understand that the design they purchased is actually a, a I don't know if I'm saying right, sketch or stretch uh, embroidery machine. But you guys saw, you, you guys know what I mean because you guys saw me bring it up on the computer. So you guys don't want to talk about it. But um, that, um, that design does have that spacing, okay? So when you are embroidering, the, the, the fibers are going to go up and it's not going to be very attractive, okay? It may look attractive when you take it out of the machine and then you give it to the customer. But after a couple of days, when they start moving that fabric around and stuff and the fibers start to move, it's going to start going through the little cracks. And then next thing you know, they're not going to be really happy with their product. And um, yeah, you don't want your name stuck on that. So, you know, remember, reputation is everything, okay? Um, yeah, so let me see. I talked about applique. I talked about full embroidery. I talked about the sketch embroidery, um, red work, red work uh, embroidery files, very popular as well, um, you know, and also the cross stitch. I really wish that we had more cross uh, stitch machine embroidery designs out there because there are a lot of people that really do like cross stitching and um you know they like that look and unfortunately you know finding a design like that is really really pretty hard okay now there is another design out there that usually is for hats but people do use them for shirts too and it's called the 3d puff embroidery now 3d puff embroidery if you guys watched me last week and i talked about hats i showed you guys a baseball hat that had the 3d um, puff embroidery. Okay. A lot of times some, you know, people will just take a regular embroidery file and then they'll put the, um, the foam underneath it. And they think that that file is going to work. I really strongly caution on that. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. And digitizers will tell you this when they create a file for 3d puff embroidery you got to remember that when they are digitizing the length of the um stitch they are considering the foam that is going to be underneath that stitch all right they have to leave space for that foam if you use a regular embroidery file, that regular embroidery file was designed to be embroidered on a flat surface, meaning that when they created that file, they never considered or thought that anyone would take that file and put foam in there and then stitch on top of it. There, I have heard that some people have done this and they have been successful at it. I have never, you know, been successful at it. Um, whenever I have taken some kind of font and put the foam underneath, it stitches it. But I will tell you, it, it doesn't, it, it just doesn't really look good, okay? Because the stitches that are developed is for a flat surface, right? So what happens is you put that foam in there and what you're doing is you're actually stretching out that thread. And what could happen is you can accidentally, within time, that thread could snap, okay? Because you are actually, you know, I mean, even though it's polyester thread and it's supposed to be really strong and all that kind of stuff, 
I wouldn't chance it. I just wouldn't chance it because, you know, you could be messing up a hat. You could be messing up a shirt. Now, uh, those 3D puff embroidery files, you don't find a lot of, okay? Um, but if you see a design that you like and there's a particular section in that design that you want to add that 3D effect to, what I recommend you do is you take that file to a digitizer and you let them know that there is a particular area in that design that you want to be able to use the foam to give it that 3D effect. What the digitizer will do is he will increase the length of that of those stitches of the area that you want to include that that um that foam in and then what's going to happen is they will create that for you and you're going to have a more solid look trust me it will look better okay a lot of times people don't want to do it because they don't want to spend the extra money on the digitizing but the way i see it is it depends how much you care about your quality okay because it, you, you don't want shabby stuff to be coming out of your shop. You really don't. I mean, I know me personally, I am very, very, very particular about it, okay? And if I need something to be, um, you know, to, to go to a customer, it has to look right. And I will spend the extra money because reputation means everything, especially when it comes to embroidery. All right, because that product, like I said, and I, I always keep saying, and I will always, always say, I mean, that product speaks volumes about you and how you do things and stuff. That's why I am a really like stickler. My mom was really amazed when she came to visit me this um, past week. Um, you know, she was here from Florida and she spent about like 10 days. I was kind of hoping she would be with me longer, but she kept saying she had things to do. I don't know. I think I got on her nerves or something. That's what I think, you know. So anyway, she wanted to go. So she left. OK, so one of the things that she kind of noticed is she took notice right away on how neat my um, shop is. And one of the things that, you know, that I told her was it's very important to me to ensure that my embroidery room, my shop is always neat. There are a lot of times when I have customers that come in, they give me items and I have to look at what it is that they need. Sometimes they're very decisive about what kind of thread color they want to use. And that's when I come and I bring them into the shop so that way they can look at my wall and they can see the threads. And we can even look on the computer because sometimes I'll take my MacBook downstairs. But if, you know, sometimes it's just easier for them to come up and I can measure and all that kind of stuff and write down the order and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you just, you want to make sure that you do things right. Honestly, you really do. Because if you don't take your business seriously, that's, they, they're not going to take you seriously. Okay. So that's just, that's how I feel about that. Okay. So anyway, I just want to share that. Okay. I mean, it's just me. Doesn't mean it has to be, you know, but it's just how I run my stuff okay so um another thing too is you know this is another sample of a sketch design which i did um you know i i like it it's okay um it didn't make my shop yet Man, I'm, I'm still deciding whether i'm going to put it on my shop or not you know sometimes you can buy um and in this i purchased off of etsy sometimes you can buy um certain designs of a certain theme and they come in like a set, right? So, and, you know, it's they, sometimes a little bit pricier, but they're not that, you know, I mean, we're not talking a hundred bucks, okay? Instead of paying $1.99, I probably paid what? Like maybe $7.99 or $9.99, something like that. But I ended up getting about like six or eight or 10 different designs. It's like a whole set and it's, it's part of a theme. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I can do like a whole theme of towels and you know there's different ways that you can sell this too you can sell the towels individually if you like you can probably sell them as a set that's another thing too you know instead of getting one towel you can do these both these towels are set okay um something else that you know you guys can think about you know so um but yeah so there's a lot of different ways that you can buy embroidery um designs and stuff okay the other thing i just want to mention this briefly i'm not a lawyer okay i'm gonna let you know that right now but um when it comes to 
um, embroidery designs, make sure that when you are purchasing embroidery designs that you are reading um, how you can use that design, okay? Some designs are copyrighted, okay? So you wanna make sure that you are reading it. You wanna make sure you're not breaking anybody's you know, no laws or anything like that. Be very conscientious of that, okay? Um, because you don't want that to bite you later, okay? Because it will bite you and stuff. So, you know, um, just something to think about, okay? Um, and if you're not sure how you can use a particular design, honestly, the best thing to do is reach out to the person that is selling the design and ask them about it, okay? Seriously. Now, another site that I do want to share with you guys about it, um, and I'm going to share my screen again, okay? And um, let me see. Here we go. I'm going to do uh, – this is another site. Okay, I'm going to leave. Do I want to leave? No, I don't. Cancel. Okay, I don't want to leave. I'm going to the wrong place. I was ready to shut myself off. Did I shut myself off? No, I did not. Okay, all right, cool. All right. Um. Here is another site that I wanted to share with you guys. Creative Fabricum. And I'm going to cancel that for now. Okay. Now, I, you know, I like this site a lot. And I'm going to tell you why. You, you know, you get a subscription if you want. You know, you don't have to, okay, if you don't want to. You know what I'm saying? However, though, I will tell you this. It is, it is kind of cheap. It's not expensive. You know, if you look right here, it's like $4.99 a month. So I, I got the subscription and stuff. And I have a link um, in the video description if you guys are interested, um, you know, affiliate link. But, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I want to share, what I really do like about this site is, first of all, $5 really is not a lot, right? It's not a lot of money. I, I To me, it's, 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 it's doable. Right. And one of the things that I really like about this site is if you go down here under needlework, OK, you can come here and you can go under embroidery. And then right here, you have all these different embroidery files. OK, and it'll come with your membership. Now, if you don't have a membership, you can just purchase it. OK, and as you can see, some of these files are not that expensive and they're cute. OK. Um, they they have little sales and stuff. Um, this is really cute. I like that one. The dog mom, that's cute. Um, you know, but something to think about, okay? You know, just another site that you may want to, um, you know, think about and, and look at. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, hold on. Um, okay, all right. So this is just another place that you can, you know, look. Now, let me tell you something about this particular website that I I kind of like a lot is that even if you are not, you know, if you're just not into embroidery or let's say you're into embroidery, but you also like to do other stuff, right? Look what I found here. They have sewing patterns. They have quilt patterns. Um, if you want to do crit, uh, Chris, Chris Stitch, you can get patterns there crocheting patterns. They got so many patterns of the needlework, okay? Also, let's say you're into sublimation, right? You're into sublimation, here goes graphics, okay? Backgrounds and all that kind of stuff and everything. I mean, they got so many things. Fonts. They got beautiful, you know, really beautiful fonts. You know, here's script fonts and, you know, they, you can use them for sublimation or, you know, or, you know, once you hit um, fonts, then you can, you know, select how you want it. Let me see. That's my latest. Let's see. Well, okay. Yeah. But see, they got so much. They really do. They have a lot. They really, really do. I mean, it's, and one of the things that I really like about it too, is that when it comes to these files, right, um, let me see if I can log in here. Well, I'm not logging. In. Okay, all right. Well, uh, whatever. Okay, so let's say um, let me go under embroidery. Let's look at an embroidery file. Let's look at this file that I, I thought was so like cute. All right. So if you, you know how I was talking to you guys about um, you know the uh, 
licensing and all that kind of stuff, copyright and everything, you know, a lot of times when you buy from this site and stuff like that, they will include, um, you know, uh, the license and stuff. So, you know, you don't have to worry about it, you know, because the last thing you want to do is, is get some kind of cease and desist letter from some company. And then next thing you know, you're like, great, you know, that's all I need, you know. <laughs> so it does include the licensing and stuff like that. This is really cute. This is applique. Yeah, it sure is. This is this is cute. I like this. Okay, so you know, there is a lot of you know nice stuff. And I and I like their sewing patterns. Let me look at their sewing patterns right here, just to show you guys. Because remember, um, at one time I was telling you guys about the sewing patterns at Joanne's, they sell them for a dollar ninety-nine, which I bought a whole bunch of. And, um, you know, talk about sewing patterns, though. I do have one that I opened. Um, you know, I opened this. And um, every time I open it and I start, it's like, uh, I can't find the time. Okay. I got to, I, you know, there's going to be, I know that soon there's going to be a day where I'm going to have a Jeanette day. And it's just going to be my day. And I'm not going to allow any interruptions. I'm not going to take any phone calls or anything, and I'm going to sew something. I'm going to have to do that. But anyway, getting back to this, look at that. See, they have, look at that. Uh, if you want a handbag, they got the sewing stuff. Um, cheap if you don't have the, um, you know, the membership. It has the prices. But if you have the membership, I believe these green ones, and, and I have to look on my computer over here, but you will, it, it'll include all this stuff in your membership. You know, because I think the $4.99 is all access. Yep, all access. So that means everything you see here, instead of paying $0.60 cents for the scrunchies, uh, $7 or whatever, you just paid $4.99 for the month, and you can download anything you want, um, embroidery, sewing, or whatever. So I think this is like a really a really good uh, good place. I really do like it. Uh, you know, I mean, it's I've you know, I, I see a lot of value in that. So you guys know that when whenever I find something that's a really, really good deal, I like to share that with you guys and stuff like that. And then you guys, um, I, I do want to um, say another thing. Also, some of you guys have reached out to me about these quilted uh, baby blankets that I get. Okay. I am going to say it again. <laughs> okay. Alibaba. Okay. Alibaba. All right. Um, they, I'm going to show this to you guys. Okay. Because you guys are, um, let me just, let me get back in here. Okay. I'm getting back in here because I'm going to show you guys. I know this is not embroidery uh, designs. All right. I, I know that, but um, I want to show you guys this. Oops. I'm going to cancel this again. I keep going to the wrong tab. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm going to shut down my own live. All right. So, um, I'm just going to look in here. Let me see if I can just search. Are they going to let me search? Yeah, they are. Okay. Right in here, type in, and I'm showing you guys, baby quilted heirloom blankets. Okay. Now, bingo, look what you see here, okay? Just saying, just saying, people, okay? Now, I know that some, look, and then some of you guys, I know you. some of you guys are coming out and they're saying, what you that? I don't need 100, I don't need 200, so I, I got that. 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 I know that. Okay. However, look, you don't have to buy a hundred. See, minimum order, 50 pieces, 50. Okay. So this is just me thinking. Okay. And then look, there's other vendors out there. Now, some of you guys also have asked me the question of Jeanette, who is the vendor that you use? I'm going to tell you something right now. I use, I, this is the vendor that I use, okay? And let me go back, because we got to have a serious conversation about this, all right? We're going to have a serious conversation about this. You go to the vendor that gives you the cheapest price, period. Hello, okay? Do not be, um, 
I don't know how to say this. I don't mean to be rough, okay? All right. But I, you know, some people say, oh, you know, I got this vendor. I know he's good and I'm going to use him all the time. I got that. I got that. I hear you. However, though, what happens is that sometimes people get a little too comfortable. And then you have other people that can be selling the exact same thing at a cheaper price. And it's just a good quality, too. But because you are stuck with that one person, you're paying more. Why? Why would you do that? So this is what my recommendation is, because I know a lot of you guys have reached out to me and they're like, hey, you know, who do you use? I know you said Alibaba. That's right. Go there. And what you do is email these vendors and say, hey, this is how many I want to purchase. And, you know, um, this is, you know, what's the best price quote you can give me? They will come back and tell you. OK, that is how you get them cheap. OK. And the other thing, too. Don't just think about the blankets. Think about your other blanks, okay? Some of you guys, um, you know, want to do bibs, right? Let's do bibs. Well, search bibs. Um, you want to do other types of baby blanks, type other types of baby blankets. Uh, do baby shirts. Do kids shirts. Um, you know, do baseball hats. Do hello. You know, why are we? Okay, if this is if this is your business, if this is what you're doing, okay, for to make money, you have to make sure that you utilize resources that can give you the blanks at a best price. Because the lower your cost is for blanks, the more of a profit you're going to put in your pocket. That's really the bottom line. Okay, now if you're doing it for a gift, okay, um, of course, you're not going to want 50, okay, because you're not selling these things, you're not, you're not, you're not making them to, to make money, you're, you're actually just getting them, so that way you can just, um, you know, give away as gifts, that totally understand, okay, however, price your items too, Google it, see who has the best price, Sometimes you can find these blankets on Amazon. Sometimes you can find them on Etsy. Sometimes you can find them probably in another platform. See who offers the best price for it, okay? Do not spend $25, $30 for these blankets. Don't, okay? Because that's like you you pay too much. You pay too much, okay? So I just want to say that. OK, because you guys have, you know, asked me a lot and some of you guys come out and say, hey, you know, um, you know, who do you buy it from? Who's your vendor and stuff like that? Well, you know, there are when it comes to 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 blanks and stuff like that, um, you know, I, I, I look at their reviews. OK, if they have good, good reviews. OK, great. And then I also ask for a quote. Don't be afraid to ask for a quote. OK, you, you know, guys, seriously, you know, these, you know, it's like it's not like in the times back in the days where it's like this information was not there. Unfortunately, you know, now it's like, you know, I don't want to say unfortunately, because now that we have access to the Internet and all that kind of stuff and everything, you can go directly to the source. OK, you can cut the middleman out. All right. So the middleman costs you money. So why are we using middleman? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know, just keep that money in your pocket. You know, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. All right. Um, the quality is the same. Um, you know, it is what it is. OK, so, you know, hello. All right. So anyway, so it is now 930 and usually I shut up at like nine. Well, like not let's okay let's be okay i don't really shut up at nine okay i usually talk because the thing is i like to share information i don't like to really hold back because my whole thing is i i like to share that's all you know <laughs> i mean you know it is what it is so um i am going to uh go through the chat okay and answer questions say hi to you guys and stuff like that okay so I see 
Marlene, how are you? Yes, Robin, my condolences as well. Um, yeah, she um, she had a death in the family and stuff. Um, oh, Marlene also got her little uh, thing in there, and I will be there. But I see that Marlene saying she's going to be on a cruise. Well, you go, go ahead. You're going to have fun. You're going to have fun. And th this happens every year, so don't worry about it. Okay. Hey, Sassy. Hey, Janet. How are you? Hey, Tammy. Hey, Jill. Jail Love, how are you doing? Crafty Patty, how are you? Hey, Jay, Anna, I see Cynthia, Eartha, Crafty Puerto Rican. Thank you for my birthday gift. And so, and if you guys don't know, um, Crafty Puerto Rican, she has an Etsy shop and stuff. And I'm telling you, she got some really, really cute stuff. And this is one of them. And I love it. Love, 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 love my um my uh tumbler here. I just love it. Um I see Marina, SBHQ, hey, Maria, um, E. Maria, Marlena. Y'all yeah, know I'm Puerto Rican, okay? And I, my, I, you know, I first, first I learned Spanish, then I learned English. So sometimes I, my, my language can be a little funky, all right? So, you know, forgive me if I screwed up your names. Hey, Judy, how are you? Hey, Janelle, how are you? Um, see, Jenny. Um, new to embroidery in new to embroidery and appreciate the heads up about the scanners. Yes, please be careful out there. Please be careful. Um, yeah, and you know it's it's unfortunate, but you know we do we do we we live in this kind of world, right? And it's stuff. So it's like you know you got you you really you always gotta you always gotta be be uh vi you know vigilant about um who you're you're interacting with and all that kind of stuff so yeah but um i'm doing my best guys to try to keep that facebook group um you know as clean as 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 possible okay um right now i'm doing all the work by myself um I, you know i don't have any uh any help so but i do go in there religiously all the time and whenever i see anything that looks sketchy okay and you know I might accidentally delete somebody that wasn't sketchy, um, but kind of seemed sketchy. So, and if I did, sorry, you know, but, you know, my whole thing is I really want it to be a safe place. I really, really, truly do. That's, you know, that's really what I want and stuff. Hey, Cher. Hey, Christian. Um, let's see. Hey, Miss Max, how are you? Um would love to be able to attend. Yes, I hope that people can attend. I think it would be a lot of fun. It's, I mean, I'm telling you, I was very, very, very impressed when I went last year. And this year, I plan on taking classes. And I am excited because they're offering surger classes. And I really want to learn the surgers and stuff. And I was actually thinking about reaching out to my sister and seeing if maybe she wants to fly out here maybe for a weekend or something like that and then me and her can go together i don't know i'll i'll talk to her and see if that's something that maybe she'll be able to do i think it'll be really great with everything that we had um going on well the challenge is to just be able to take a break and just have some sister time and um because i know that she loves to quilt and if you guys don't know nancy is my sister and she she runs a, a youtube channel gifts hq She's about quilting. She does crocheting, knitting. She does embroidery too. Um, and she does her shows every Saturday at 12. So it's Gifts HQ. So it's really, really good. It's, it, she does a really good show. She works really hard on that show. So I really would appreciate you guys can show her the support as well. But, um, you know, I really want to see if um, maybe this year she can come and um, I can get her over here for the weekend. And then we can just like spend like, a, you know, a weekend together i'll probably even get us if, if she can't come i'll probably even maybe get us a hotel room that way we can probably just stay there and just um that way we could be the first ones that when they open up and the last ones when they close so it should be kind of fun so i don't know i'm gonna reach out to her and see what we can work out i know me and my sister have also talked about visiting quilt town um forgot where that was i think it's missouri or something like that or we talked about going there where it's missouri yeah missouri star i think it is in missouri so we were thinking about making a trip out there um 
I don't know where we're going to be able to do that, but that is that is something on my bucket list that I would like to do with her. And I think when I, when me and her finally decide when we're going to go, I think what I'll do is I will let people know just in case people want to join in the fun as well, because I think that would be a really great fun trip as, as well. I've never been there. I heard a lot of great things about that. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see and stuff. So I'm going to try. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat, Jay. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. So, you know, just thanks to, to come because I, I really um, I like those those uh i like these events you learn so so much you really really do and what i really like is it's such a sharing environment that's what i really like and 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 that's really what this channel is really about because um i reason why i wanted to start this channel is because when you know just to give you a little history when i wanted to learn how to embroider and how to run a business and all that kind of stuff and i watch other channels sometimes i find that People will share, but they kind of like, they're selective in the sharing. And me personally, I, you know, I really don't care. <laughs> you know, I, I, and it's not that I don't care. It's, I don't mind sharing it. I, I don't mind sharing the whole thing. Like, you know, like, you know, even like, where, Jeanette, where do you get your blanks? Well, hell, you know, I mean, I'm not interested in, um, in, in, you know, and do it. I, I don't, it's not hustling, but I just don't, I'm not interested in doing, uh, um, in, in holding back information, right? You know, now, do I sell these on my shop as blanks? I do for those people that just only need one or two. And I do sell them at a price that's, um, you know, reasonable, but I really don't make money off my, off the blanks that I sell on my Etsy shop. I kind of like sell them. So that way I just break even. Um, you know, but I don't mind sharing the information and, and that's what I kind of like about the, the community is that, you know, people want to share because I like seeing people succeed. I really do. I, I get a high off of it. I think, I think it's awesome when people succeed, you know? So, I mean, I don't know. That's just, just, that's just me. You know, I don't know, you know, some people could say it's bad business. You don't give away your secrets or whatever, but you know, you, you don't know who you're helping out. That's just how I see it. You don't know if there's someone out there that is struggling and trying to figure out how they can, um, you know, improve their situation or whatever. And, you, you know, if you can just help one person, to me, it's just worth it. That's just how I see it. You know, that's just me. So anyway, getting back to the hellos. Okay, so... Um, we see, I see Eartha. Hey, Sylvia, how are you here in Puerto Rico? I bet you it's hot in Puerto Rico because I tell you what, it's hot as hell in Virginia. It really is. Oh my God. Um, let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Hey, Ivana from California. I bet you the weather's nice in California too. I bet you because don't you guys have like that weather that's like the same all year round? It's so jealous, you know. So, hey, Judy, how are you? How you doing, Janelle? Um, let's see. Uh, let me see. My did I go back? Hey, Christina, how are you, Anna? Um, hey, Sassy. And I did put the information, guys, of the uh, Sewing and Quilt Show um, on the website, okay? And I will continue to repeatedly put that in there so nobody tries to miss it and stuff and everything. And another thing also, so you guys know, um, you know, we're already half of the year, okay? And um, for those of you that are part of my Facebook group, you guys, um, if you have been with me long enough, you know, for the last two years, one of the things that I do is I host a... Um, Christmas exchange for the folks in the group, okay, for those that want to participate. And one of the things that I like about that is that, you know, you're always making stuff and giving things to other people. So I do that gifts exchange so that way we can give to each other. I will be hosting that again this year. Um, it's been a pretty big success. A lot of people seem to enjoy it. And, you know, I think that's something that I'm going to keep doing on an annual basis. So I just want to let you guys know that we'll be coming up and I'll probably open that up around the October time frame. If not October, definitely uh, November, um, but probably the end of October or the first week of November, because that way people have enough time to make it and 
and make their gift and send it out in the mail. So it's just something that I wanted to put out there. Um, hey, Leslie, how are you? Hey, Tanya. Um, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, Leslie, I hope you're there again this year. I, want, I hope to see you again this year. Um, hey, Debbie, how are you? How boring is that? Be the same like everyone else. I know, right? If we all look the same and stuff, this would be a boring place, wouldn't it? So this, we got to get creative and stuff. Just make things different. Hey, Deborah, how are you? I'm looking forward to it again, too. Um, and I think Miss Shirley's going to meet us this year, too. Um, from uh, I think her channel is so... I think I saw her. She's in there too. And I'll mention her. I, I, as a matter of fact, I will show her when I get there. I saw her there. Hey, Tanya. Um, let's see. So, love, how are you? Everybody's just saying hi. Hey, Carol, Robin, how are you? Chanel, how you doing? Oh, first time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And I hope you're having fun. Um, fabulous. How are you? Um, I took the schedule for the expo. There is no digitizing. Yes, they, you know, I noticed that morning they do not offer digitizing um, classes at these expos. I don't think they do. Um, but I know that they do have like some embroidery classes, but it's like to make um, projects and stuff like that. And I think they even had one on here that talked a little bit about different types of stabilizers, if I'm not mistaken. I could have why I saw something on here about that. And they did it in the hoop. I did see an in the hoop in there. Um, let's see if I see something. I could have why I saw something regarding stabilizer. Um, oh, you want to hoop that. They have one called you want to hoop that. You're embroidering on what? And embroidering knits. That's a pretty interesting one, too. Um, I, I wonder if they talk about the knockdown, the knockdown stitches on that, you know. Um, yeah, so let me see. Uh, oh, I didn't see anything on stabilizers. Maybe they're talking about stabilizers for sewing. Oh, so many different types of stabilizers. Yeah, and I think that is in a general interest uh, group. So they did they did uh, have a class on stabilizers in there. They have a lot of different classes and stuff, um, you know, tips and tricks for every sewer's needs. What needle do I use? That's another good class. So that way you know about the different types of needles. Um, if you guys have watched me, you guys know that um, I use a lot of the 7511 and the 659 needle for embroidery for sewing i use the 8012 and um i sometimes use the 9014 as well i also use metallic needles whenever i'm embroidering with metallic thread so you know there are so many different needles out there for different purposes and you know that would really be a good class for you guys to um to to attend so you guys get to learn and i bet you when they're talking about what needle to use I wonder if they're going to touch about the different brands, okay? Because, you know, there are a lot of different brands of needles out there. I personally use organ needles, but I know that there's one, I think it's called Swartz or Switz or something. I don't know. It's with the S, okay? So they have those type of needles out there as well. So, you know, um, so it'd be interesting to see what they teach in that class regarding, you know, not just the the... The needle size, but if they talk about the different brands and also the different types, because sometimes you have the regular ones and then you do see something, especially with embroidery needles, they have something called the top, uh, is it, I think it's a titanium, something like that. I might be saying wrong. I think it's titanium uh, type of needle. Okay. And that needle is supposed to last longer than your regular sewing or embroidery needle, okay? I usually buy the regular ones, which that needle you should be changing every eight hours. But supposedly the other the other needle that is made of some other type of material is supposed to be stronger. So you should be able to um, use that needle for a longer period of time. So it'd be interesting to ask them the question of, because I noticed those needles cost more money. Is it really worth the extra money to buy 
those titanium needles? That would be a really good question to ask at that class, you know, and, and see. So yeah, they have a lot of, of good stuff in there. And, um, I'm definitely going to be studying this and um, circling classes that really interest me. And I'm going to sign up. I think this year I'm really going to try to take advantage of this whole um, expo because I am, you know, last year I just went that one day. And I think this year I actually want to take advantage of all of it to really um, see what it is that this, this whole thing offers and stuff, because I really liked what I saw last year. I really, really did. Um, I have been out of whack with my embroidery and I had moved and I, Hey, Carol, how you doing? Um, and I miss watching you and your generous work. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> and so you'll get back in the groove, Carol. That's for sure. Um, let me see. Uh, let's see what else we got in there. Um, could you make a patch in Brilliance Merlin for the camo hat? I'm a huge camo fan. You know, I think I can. And that is something, um, Marlena, that, um, and I'm going to highlight your, your comment, if you don't mind. Um, that is definitely something that I am considering, you know, because um, now the thing is, this is the thing, okay? Um, I don't know if you guys notice that sometimes when you look at certain hats and they have them with patches on them, right? Um, you sometimes see them where they're kind of like sewn in. There is a special sewing machine to um, sew baseball hats, okay? This is not something you can put on a regular sewing machine and then just sew around it, all right? It's going to be pretty tricky and pretty difficult. They have these sewing machines that are kind of like they have like something that goes up and then it's kind of like you maneuver it around there so that way you can actually sew the patch. What I'm thinking of doing is exactly what you're saying, Marlena. I'm thinking of creating a patch using a brilliance, uh, the, the Merle module in, in brilliance because I do have that. And I was thinking of using fabric glue to put it on. That way I can cover that. And I really like this hat too. So um, I don't know. But you know what? As I do that and I try that, I will videotape that and um, and see if it's a success. Um, but like I said, I am going to, even though this was a fail, I am going to put that fail video on the channel because that way you guys see if you decide later on that you want to try to do something similar to what I was doing here. Um, don't do it the way I did it. Okay. So it's going to be one of those don't do it this way video. So you guys probably will have a good laugh because you'll probably be like, oh, she, she screwed that one up, you know? <laughs> so yeah, but you know, mistakes happen, right? That's how you live and that's how you learn and stuff. Um, hey, Cynthia, how are you? Hooping station came in the mail today. Excited to try it out. You're going to like it. I'm telling you. I mean, hooping stations are pretty pricey, but I will tell you they are really worth the money. They, I mean, I, I use it literally all the time. I really, really do. And so, so you are going to enjoy that, Cynthia. You really are. Um, let's see. Last year, physical. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um I still don't have a hooping station. Hopefully, I will find one soon. And so you can um, contact, if depending on the iris on the hooping station that you're looking for, if you want one that I, you, you know, I do have the information on the video description and stuff, and you can call them up. Just make sure you let them know. And, you know, honestly, you know, they have a website, but I strongly recommend that you guys call them. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the hooping stations have different versions. All right. And, you know, if you want a hooping station for the SC 1900, the clips, OK, you want the clips to be the ones that work with the hoop that works with your machine. So if you have a Viking machine, if you have, um, you know, uh, uh, a baby lock or you have a brother or, so, or you know, um, cellular or whatever machine it is that you have. 
I really recommend that it's best to call them. They're very nice people. They will help you, trust me. Um, you know, because the thing is, that is, it, it's a heavy item. And you know, if you use my, my code, you will get the free shipping. And, and, and I highly recommend you do do that because this is heavy stuff, okay? So you don't want to pay that shipping cost, right? So I was able to talk to them and they were able to say, okay, we'll give you guys um, the free shipping. So, um, you know, what I would do is I would call them up and I would tell them, this is the machine I have. This is the model. And they will make sure that everything that you order is specific to that model, okay? They do have the website, but it really is easier to do that. Because I remember Janice one year, I, or someone, I know someone that watches me ordered it online. They ordered the wrong model and um, they had to like ship it to them, ship it back. It, it was just a mess. So try to avoid that. So, you know, to me, it's like, unless you know exactly what it is and you don't have a problem, then okay. But um, I recommend really calling them because it because that way you, you really know exactly you're getting the right stuff because it's, it's so disappointing that you're getting you get excited and you're ready to work and then all of a sudden you're like oh, i got the wrong part you know that that can be a down a downer right so you don't want that to happen so always you know just um try to avoid that stuff okay so um let me see let's see um I do have a lot of baby onesies and love it I have the infant hooping station much easier than normal hooping Oh, another thing, my machine was in the shop for many months. You know, um, Carol, you mentioned the baby who, the onesies. I also purchased a lot of onesies because I was thinking, oh, I may want to embroider some onesies because I do have some friends now that are becoming grandmas. So um, I was thinking, oh, let me just try these different, you know, baby onesies and stuff. And I think I might like that. But my niche is more the home. It really is. It's the kitchen towels, the dinner napkins, and all that kind of stuff. And I do like the baby blankets. I do. But I, you know, the clothes, I kind of really try to stay away from it for the simple fact that I don't want to deal with all these sizes. That's the thing that I don't like about clothing, guys. I'm serious. Because you always got small, medium, large. Then for the kids, you got the the, the different numbers, and then for babies, you have three months, six months, uh, 12 months. Then next thing you know, you got a whole bunch of clothes in all these different sizes. I don't like that. I really don't. That's the whole, that's the thing that really kind of like shies me away from the clothing area, okay, is because of the different types of sizes, and you don't know what your next customer is going to want, you know, so... I kind of shy away from that. What I like about the baby blankets is one size fits all. Kitchen towels, one size fits all. And I only offer two colors. And in some designs, the color is what the color is. I don't change it up. I don't come out and say, oh, you like that design? Okay, I can do it in this color or that color. I know what color towel looks nice with what particular designs because I don't change the colors in my design. So I already know what looks good on what. And that's how I offer it. And I like that because it keeps my inventory down. Okay. But I did kind of bite the bullet and I did buy a couple of baby onesies. So, um, yeah, I might play around with it and see, you know, well, I'm going to have to because, I mean, heck, I paid for it. You know, <laughs> I ain't going to pay for that stuff to have it sitting around, you know, and stuff. So, you know, that that would suck, you know. <laughs> mm. Let's see. Um, oh, my God. I would need that. My grandson was accepted into a prestigious school, and I have to do a logo on the school shirt. And this is his first year of school. Yeah, I will be posting those videos tonight. I will do that. I do have to um, upload them. I got to edit them, and I'm going to post them. They will be there this weekend and stuff, um, you know, for sure. Um Sampling is so important. Yes, Janelle, it, it is. I mean, and this is the thing too. Um, you have to sample your designs. And you, you know, it first of all, you want to make sure that the designs, the embroidery designs that you that you buy are of very good quality. Okay. Because like I keep stressing, that stuff talks about you when it leaves the shop. Okay. And also, you don't want to mess up your stuff. 
You really don't. Okay, so that is so, 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 so freaking important. Really, guys, seriously. I mean, you know, the the last thing you want is suddenly to leave your shop and it, it's, it's, it's crappy. People are going to talk about you. I mean, you, <laughs> you may think that, oh, that's all right. Trust me, it'll bite you. It will bite you, okay? Make sure the stuff that you do is clean and crisp, prestige. You have to, you have to. So just like Janelle said, sampling is so important. It really is. It really is. If you're going to be lazy and not do it, then I don't know. Maybe to me, I look at like you might not be so successful in the embroidery business. I mean, you really may not. And that's, that's just my perspective, okay? Because your reputation is what speaks, honestly. And that's what's going to get you repeat customers. And that's what's going to get you referrals. Because this is a business really truly about referrals, okay? It's, it's about, you know, when people are looking for custom work, they're not looking for sloppy work. And you also have to remember also, I, I also deal with a lot of other small business owners and I work on their, you know, like, um, you know, I, I work with a hospital. I do a lot of their doctor jackets. I do a lot of the nurse scrubs. Okay. Um, I have small businesses around here where I do their dinner napkins for their restaurants. I do their aprons for their um, employees, their polo shirts and all that kind of stuff. You got to remember that wet, that work that you're doing represents you when it steps out the door. But if you're doing that embroidery work for another small business owner, that work is also representing them. So just like the, you need to protect your reputation, they need to protect theirs too. So they're not, you know, they don't want their employees walking around with polos with sloppy embroidery on it. Okay that they're not going to be feeling that, okay? When they have those dinner napkins in those fancy restaurants with their with their logo on it, that is an impression that they're giving the customers when they come and sit down in their restaurant to have that meal. That represents their business. So, you know, I'm just putting it out there. You really seriously have to think about that. You have no idea the importance of it. I mean, you know, if you if you don't see it, it, it could it could really bite you. Um, and then it depends on how serious you are, okay? It really does. It depends on how serious you are in growing your business and your reputation, okay? If you're just doing this for a hobby and you really don't don't care, then okay, then all right, you know, it's, it's cool, all right? But if you are truly about establishing yourself and establishing your business, you got to be golden all the way. You can't do anything half. You can't. I am. I can't stress it enough. Okay. I want to go into the camera and go. Please, please. Okay. Don't mess that up because that is really going to hurt you. That one, that one design that walks out there and looks looks jacked up. If they start, if if that thing starts to circulate then guess what? Your reputation is going to be jacked up and people are going to be like, mm, don't go, go find another place. And trust me, people will travel. People will travel to you if they know that your work is good. Because I do have people that come from other states to see me to do their embroidery. And, you know, and I even got a surprise. I have someone who is an upcoming um, celebrity, okay? And I'm not, I'm not giving names because I don't do that to my clients and stuff. But um, she's, uh, she's got outfits, okay, that she has to um, wear for some, some, some of her events, okay? And guess who's doing her embroidery? Me. Why? Because <laughs> she heard about me. I don't know she heard about me, okay? But showed up, and I was like, whoa. And you know what's so funny is I didn't know who this person was um, until I 
saw it was kind of like okay this you know this weird right um it was just weird <laughs> and then i looked it up and i was like oh my god that's her i was like oh my god and i did not ask for an autograph i didn't take a picture or anything like that because it's all about business right you know it's stuff but i have to tell you i was very very honored that this person sought me out and i was just like Wow. I was like, oh my God. Even my husband was taken back. He was like, Jeanette. I was like, I know. I know. And even my son was like, Ma. And I'm like, yeah. So anyway, so I'm excited. I'm excited about that. So, but like I said, it's all about quality of work. Okay. People look for that. People look for that. Please take that serious. Okay. And it, and this is the other thing too. Quality of work means you practice. You practice, you sample, okay? You're going to make a lot of mistakes. I make mistakes. I still make mistakes. And I consider myself pretty good at what I do, okay? And I, you know, I take this very seriously. I don't I don't mess around, okay? So, you know, everybody's going to make mistakes. You know, I don't care if you've been doing this for 20, 25 years. There's going to be a day that you're going to have a bad day, all right? But sample your stuff, seriously. You know, I mean... It's, oh, could I stress it anymore? Okay. I don't think I can. All right. You know, so I think you guys have the picture. All right. So, um, hey, Karen, how you doing? Um, oh my God, that is so cool. Karen, I am so happy for you. Inspired me. You embroidered a towel. It did um, some dish towels and they turned out fabulous. Karen, good for you. See, you can do it. I'm telling you. You know, I mean, embroidery, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on, it is not, it's not, you know, it's not hard, but at the same time too, I don't want people to think this is easy stuff either. Okay. It does. It's a skill. It is a skill. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know why you're doing it and stuff like that. And the more you do this stuff, the more you embroider, the more you start learning about the, what works, what doesn't work. And you're going to, you're going to know. And when you watch the video that I am going to post tonight on the logo, okay, where I did the small font and then I went and I had to do the patch, okay, because I knew that was just not going to work. And I didn't want, I did not want that item to leave here without an option, okay. And I provided the option to the customer. Watch that. That is a perfect example of when. You know, with the experience of embroidery, you know what works, you don't, you know what doesn't work. And even though the customer was so adamant and, she, and they were like, no, this is what I want. I'm serious. And I was like telling them, I don't think this is going to work. And they were like, no, but this is what I want. And I was like, you, you get, you're kind of torn. You know, like half of me wanted to say, no, I don't want to do it because I know it's going to look like crap, you know, but I didn't want to hurt the person. So I came on and I said, okay. Let's see, let's see how it, it turns out. And when I did it, they were, you know, they were kind of like, it looks okay. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. And you guys are going to see it. When you see the video, you're going to be like, man, you're so on point. And, you know, it, it's just not, you, it comes with experience. Okay. I'm telling you, this is stuff that comes with experience and stuff. And here is my sister. For the, you guys that don't know, this is my sister, Nancy. She's Gift Saves Cute. That's her channel. And she does her live Saturdays at 12 o'clock. She's very, very good at what she does as well. Um, you know, I am more of the embroiderer of the family. I'm, I'm like, embroidery is my thing. And I, I live, breathe it, everything. Embroidery, okay? Now, do I have sewing machines and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I do. However, I still have to use a sewing guide to be able to sew straight. Her, on the other hand, she's good. She does quilting and uh, the she does crocheting, uh, knitting, and all that kind of stuff. She's big on the Abbey and all that kind of stuff and everything. Me, it's just strict embroidery. You, you embroidery. Everybody knows it's Jeanette. Just gotta go to her, you know. Um, but everything <laughs> she go to Nancy. Nancy, Nancy got the rest of the stuff going on. And stuff. Um, 
Let me see. Oh, uh, Jeanette, when you receive your digitizer file, do you change the cha uh, the thread colors? Absolutely, Miss Max. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, that is one of the things that I like is that you can have a design and you can change it up. Okay. Um, and a lot of times too, sometimes what happens is the color palette that they use on that embroidery design isn't exactly the threads that maybe you have in shop, right? Like I use Madeira, I also use Nanny Threads, I use uh, Brother Reed, I use Sim Threads. I have so many different brands of um, threads that I use. So sometimes it's like what the digitizer or what the design comes in as, it doesn't really match the colors that I have in my shop. So yes, that is, you know, I always change them. I always do. Sometimes I like the color palette that they're using. And then what I'll do is I'll just change it up to something close to what I have. But there have been times also that I like it, but I'm like, you know what? I have these other colors that I think would look better. You know what I'm saying? So yes, I do change them all the time. Hey, Jay, how are you? Hey, Chanel. Oh, you're a beginner trying to get all the information. You're going to learn, girl. You're going to learn before you know it. You're going to be uh, you're going to be up there. You I'll probably have to have you as a guest. You know, <laughs> you're going to probably have to show me. And so um, I have a problem with unzipping the files. What program do you use? Well, um, Carol, what I usually do is I have a Mac. And usually what I do is when I double click it, it instantly opens it to a folder. So if you have Windows, I don't know um, if they have special programs for that. But what I would do is, um, mm, I don't know who you could reach out for help for that. Um, maybe, uh, if, maybe the manufacturer of your computer, maybe if you're using Windows, maybe Microsoft, you can reach out to them. Maybe they have some kind of a uh, program that could probably help to unzip files for you and stuff. Um, let me see. As uh, oh, Miss Max, I had a tree design and had that had a million jump stitches. As a result, I could just not make all of the family handkerchiefs for the funeral. Very disappointing. See, that's what I'm talking about. Of when you're looking to buy, um, you know, I'm gonna put this out here. See how she talks about the jump stitches and everything? That can be a problem in, in a lot of designs, okay? So that is when I'm talking about the quality of embroidery files, okay? So when you're buying stuff, you want to make sure that it's something that is designed very well, okay? Now, I do have, Miss Max, a video on my channel where I show how to remove jump stitches from a embroidery file that you um, that you purchase, and that video probably could have helped you because you would have had to have spent some time modifying that design. But once you've removed all those jump stitches, then you would have been fine going ahead and then just you know once you 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 modified it and you saved the new file, you probably would have been able to um, embroider more of those handkerchiefs um, more quickly. But yeah, it is disappointing when you see that there's a lot of jump stitches and stuff like that. It can, you know, it can be a pain. It really, really, truly can. Um, let me see. Let's see. Hey, Gail. Hey, Miss Smiles. How are you? Um, hey, Iris. Yeah, Mello is here sleeping. And he was playing with me earlier, too. I thought he was going to do a cameo today, but I think not. <laughs> I guess he's like, leave me alone. Um, also, when you're looking at the font, check to see if they have a site. Sometimes better prices. Awesome. Veronica, thank you so much. Yes, I have to put this out here. Okay. She very, girl, that's because right, you know I like to save a buck, okay? I don't like wasting my money, okay? Very, very, very true. What you do is when you find a font that you like, write down the name of the font, do a search, for that font, Google it or something like that. Sometimes somebody is selling that same font at a cheaper price. It's true. It is true because I've gotten some fonts that way. So thank you so much, Veronica, for pointing that out because I'm telling you, 
save your money save it okay because that's what's going to put more profits in your pocket seriously hey kim how are you um i really don't like flower sock towels um oh i sock sack towels like to use the towel with substance me too iris i don't you know and for for a long time those thin towels were pretty popular i actually like the thick towels i think they're more durable i think they're more long lasting um, I just like those so much better. I mean, it's just, it's a preference. It's just something that I kind of like. Hey, Nettie, how are you? Oh, red, red whoop is usually done by hand and stitches are red. Oh, really? Okay. Well, then that explains it. Iris, why they call it red. <laughs> you know what? Knowing me, I'd be changing the color. Okay. <laughs> People be looking at my designs like, she's different. She really is different. I'll be like, yeah, I am. <laughs> um, Let's see. Oh, everybody's telling me, correcting me. The re the thread is red. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Maggie. Always good information. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, JC Productions. How you doing? Um, In all the years of embroidery, have you had a client ever come to you saying that he wants his blazer embroidered for a conference? So having the logo made on the blazer... How would you do it between in brilliance digitizing? I, okay, between brilliance digitizing and hash digitizing, which one do you choose? Okay, um, okay, JC, I have um, done that, okay? I have actually um, worked with some of my business um, clients, biz small business owner clients, and they usually have their logo, right? And usually they go to conferences all the time and, you know, they, they have like booths and everything. And um, usually what I do is I'm not a digitizer, okay? Now, I know some digitizing. I'm more of a machinist, okay? And I really don't have an interest in, in, in learning how to digitizing. I find it kind of boring. I don't know. It's just me. So um, what I usually do is I have the customer give me a, a graphic design of their logo, and I work with the digitizer to get the logo digitized. Okay. I always prefer to get that professionally digitized. And, um, you know, I usually have my preferred digitizers that, that I work with and I have them listed in our Facebook group. And, um, what I like to do too, is when I'm meeting with these clients, right. There are several things that you really want to uh, talk to them about. First of all, you want to look at the garments that they are that they are looking to get embroidered, all right? Because you want to be able to look at the type of material that they're using. Sometimes they're using hoodies. Sometimes it's a sweatshirt. Sometimes it's a polo. Sometimes it's a blazer or a jacket, okay? So you want to look at that type of material. When you know the type of material that they want to get embroidered, that is going to help you work with the digitizer to ensure that that logo is going to embroider very nicely on that particular item, okay? So what's going to happen is um, I usually meet with them. I like to look at what it is that they want embroidered. I look at their logo, and then I usually do have uh, a conversation with the digitizer, and I send them pictures of the items. I let them know the type of material that it is, and then also... Make sure that when you talk to the customer, you ask them about the socks, okay, of your logo. Now, a lot of times people, what they do is they will get a, a design and then what they'll do is they'll, they'll get it digitized and then they'll put it in their embroidery software and they go, oh, you know what, I'm going to make it big, okay, and then I'm going to make it small. And then what happens is when you're doing that, sometimes depending on how much you enlarge or you make that item smaller, you know, you can lose the integrity of that design. All right. So, you know, like the person that, you know, um, that came to me um, and I'm doing her, uh, her um, embroidering some of her outfits for certain events that she has coming up. They're going to be in different designs. She has a particular logo. They're going to be on different types of material. And they're they're going to be, um, you know, I need different sizes, all right? So make sure that when you talk to them, 
that you make sure that you have a thorough understanding of the type of size they want per item. OK, so that when you talk, work with the digitizer, I would make sure that you get it digitized at that size. All right. Because you don't want to go ahead and make it larger and smaller. And then all of a sudden it doesn't stitch out good. OK, so I, I know that you are probably looking more like um, probably an answer of like how I digitize. I don't digitize. I'm more of a machinist. Um, you know, I like to send my work out and stuff. So that's, you know, that's just how I do it and stuff. Hey, Shirley, how you doing? Um, hey, and this is another one. This is Miss Shirley. So too, we begin embroidery. She has a channel as well. Her channel is pretty awesome. She does lives on Tuesdays. She does lives on Tuesdays. And so, and she had a birthday this month too. Ain't that right, Miss Shirley? I think you did. I think you're a July girl. And oh my gosh, she's been busy with her cricket. Okay. Um. Oh, JC said the biggest pro uh, problem with uh, Creative Fabrica right now is that there is not enough fonts for embroidery compared to every other font that they have. Love um, Creative Fabrica. I use it all the time with my clients. Yes, and and that is true, um, JC. They they are limited. OK, but, you know, I mean, but to me, for for the price of four ninety nine, dollars oh, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. OK, now um, I have gotten some fonts from them, but a lot of my fonts have you have usually come from either Etsy or they come from Stitchtopia, you know, and stuff. But um, yeah, but they do have a lot of it. now. Another thing, too, that I notice sometimes with Creative Fabrica is sometimes there have been, a, uh, I think, like one or two times where I had downloaded an embroidery file, didn't really stitch out the way I thought it should. Um, but I mean, it was cheap file. You know, and this was before I joined it. But then I said, you know what? Let me just join it. It's only four ninety nine, and then you get access to all the website and stuff like that. So I figured it's probably worth it. And I like the fact that you get sewing patterns and all this other stuff. So you know, to me, I was like, eh, it's not bad. I'll, I'll do it. You know, and stuff. Um, let me see. Um, outside of creative, out um, individual Etsy, what other good roster do you recommend? uh new york something that has all access like creative fabrica um creative fabrica is really the only one that i have as a subscription um i have gone to other websites like designs by juju designs by little b um creative applica is another one that i've gone to um i've gone to those um jc um you know, as for, for embroidery designs. Um, Etsy is a really big one that I like to go to also. Um, embroidery library is another one, even though I find them a little bit pricey sometimes, you know, sometimes I see a nice embroidery design and I see the price and I'm like, mm, that's a little high type of file. But it could be because I'm so cheap that I'm used to paying low prices. And when I see that something's like more than like, five or six dollars i'm like mm, that's kind of hot you know it's like mm, i don't know you know so i have to like sometimes i'll bookmark it but i have to think about it you know because i'm like that's a lot of money because think about it, if you buy that and um let's say it's not a good seller then you kind of like got the money you know what i mean so it's like mm, you know it's a hit and miss you know Hey, Peggy, Christian, Aaron, Vanette. Thank you, Jenny, for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Um, let me see. Would you recommend, what would you recommend for a very good show for embroidery stuff that I know that there are so many out there around the nation? Um, I guess what you're trying to say, what uh, to sell? Um, there are a lot of things jc that actually sell um you know my thing is the home a lot of people like personalized items and stuff i do have a girlfriend in maryland that she has in um she does uh you know embroidery also and she has like she does like the farmer's market and stuff like that and mostly the farmer's market for her is like she likes to sell um jean jackets 
jackets, right? Jean jackets is a big thing. Let me tell you guys. So if you guys um, go to like Salvation Army or something like that and you find some jean jackets and stuff, jean jackets, take those jean jackets, you want to in the back of them, especially for the kids, okay? Um, do like butterfly designs or something like that. People love that stuff. And she does very, very well with that. But at the same time that she sells the jean jacket, she likes to display her work. And what um, what is really good about that is that if someone is looking for embroidery work, they get to see samples of her work. And, you know, and that's how she gets a lot of customers and stuff like that. So I um, hope that that helps and stuff. Hey, Jenny, how you doing? Oh, legit. She wants to go to Missouri Star Quilt, too. Um, hey, Angela and Stitches, how are you? Um, hey, Iris. Oh, just turning in. Quick question. Do you recommend the 10 needle over the brother? The bigger is worth the extra money. I'm ready to buy. Okay, Martha. All right. Honestly, yeah, I would, if you can do it, if you can, if you can afford the 10, then I would do the 10. Okay. I got the six because I was kind of like a chicken. Okay. You know, first of all, embroidery machines cost money. It's like buying a freaking car. Okay. And when I went in there, I saw that and I was like, oh my God, I want one and stuff. And then when I saw the price I almost fell out, I was like, oh my God. But my husband was the one that pushed me because he was like, just do it, just do it. He actually told me, get the 10 needle machine. For some reason, I said, no, 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 that's too much. Um, I, I'll get the six needle, right? Now, I'm going to tell you something. I still have my six needle right here, okay? I could easily take this and trade it in for a 10 needle. However, though, I don't want to. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, the six needle has a laser pointer. And I kind of like that functionality because... Sometimes when I'm embroidering, the laser pointer will show, will, will, that red dot will show exactly where that needle is going to go down. The 10 needle does not have that. The 10 needle, what it does is you have kind of have to look at the screen and kind of like figure it out in a way. But what I really love about the 10 needle is that this one has that camera, the scanning. So depending on what I, my need is, that will determine the machine that I use. Like right now I have this hooked up for um, hats, okay? So, but I, I like them, they work for me. Um, but what I would do, uh, you know, Marley, cause like I said, I don't like really telling people what to buy. I really don't because you know, everybody's need is different, okay? So what I would do, this is what I would do, okay? I would look at both machines, do a comparison, Okay, and then see what works for you. That's that's what I would do. Okay, now I will tell you having those four extra needles, um, you know that does work. Okay, um, you know, and also look at the embroidery designs that you usually do. Okay, how many color changes do you usually put in there? Okay, um, I have a lot of designs that only have like um, five or seven colors. You know, um, I I don't like embroidery designs that have like 12 15 20 colors it's not my thing i, I just mm -mm. i i like i like designs to be nice and simple okay um you know so do do your homework and so i, I don't want to tell you one way or the other i will tell you this um just pick what's right for you and trust me you'll be happy you're gonna be happy because that's that's what's important right it's gonna work for you but um i believe the 10 needle does have a larger embroidery space than the six. Do do the comparison. I will go to the brother website because I think they 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 have both a large one. So you know I, I'm happy with both. I really did. Um let's see. My friend sold me a baby hurling blanket I needed for a gift, and she charged me $20. <laughs> um let me see, JC, do you know what I really enjoy about you is you don't hold back and you talk about everything. Many people should be like you. Many people should see what you do and follow your footsteps. Oh, thanks, Jay-Z. I appreciate it. Um, honestly, the goal is really to help you guys. Really, honestly. You know, if I don't know the answer, I'm just going to tell you up front. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, you know, but 
I do like sharing because I feel like that's what helps people grow and stuff. And, you know, and I just feel like sometimes it's like pe people, they sometimes, I don't know. I feel like some people say, I want to help you, but I want to help you only this much, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll only share this much. I don't want to like, you know, I don't know. It's just sometimes people can be kind of funky, you know, or shady or I don't know, whatever. But um, I like to keep it real. I really do. I mean, I feel like you you get more by doing that. I, I, I just don't. It's just this my personality. That's just what it is. Okay. <laughs> but I'm glad you, you like it. I'm glad you're enjoying the information. I'm glad it's helpful and stuff. And if, if it is, then I'm at my goal. I'm at my goal. <laughs> so, hey, Eugene, how you doing? Um, let's see. You are a great ambassador for sewing. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the great work. Ah, uh, thanks. I appreciate it. And please share share the channel, also, guys. You know, if you know if you know other people that want to, um, you know, that need information or or want to learn, you know, um, because I'm not really like I try to do the social media as much as possible, but it's kind of like people just find me by accident. Okay, honestly, because you know. I'm not really like a Instagrammer or whatever, but if you know other people or, you know, please share the channel and stuff so that more people can, can learn, you know, um, and stuff. I would, I would really appreciate that. That would be great and stuff. Oh, are you from the Miami foot? No, nope, my sister is JC. Um, my sister is my mom's in Homestead. Yeah. I'm in Virginia and stuff. Um, but I do go to Florida a lot. And stuff, um, you know, well, I've been going for a lot lately because, well, um, you know, our dad passed away recently. Um, so now it's like it's just my mom. So I'm definitely going to have to go more often because my mom's 84 and I want to make sure she's OK. She's going to be fine. You know, she'll be fine and stuff like that. You know, I just got to go over there and bother her once in a while, you know, get on her nerves and stuff. So I had her here for 10 days and um, I wanted her longer, but I think I did get on her nerves a little bit. So. Because I put her to work. That's what it was. She didn't want to work in the embroidery machine and stuff. And once I got her on the sewing machine right there, she was like, oh, I got to go. So I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so I see it now, you know, <laughs> lazy. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is, what's up with that old lady. She turned 84 years old. She got lazy on me. I don't know. And stuff. I'm going to have to have a little talk and stuff. So um, let's see. Oh, it looks like everybody's loving all the information that I'm giving them. Thank you, Veronica. I appreciate that. Oh, uh, thank you, Janet. I appreciate that as well. Um, yes, John Deere. Yes, Marsha. Um, yeah, and that's another thing too. Um, J JC Production. I don't know if you know about this. John Deere is. Um, he's good. He's good. But I, I'm going to be honest with you. I signed up for one of his. Um, it was like a, a digitizer 101. He's a very soft spoken person, right? And um, I, I and, and he's good. He's good. Don't get me wrong. And he knows his stuff. Okay, because I'm gonna tell you something. His family, his his parents, his grandparents, his great grandparents have been in the embroidery business for like decades. Okay, this family is nothing but embroidery. All right, but um, you know, because of his voice being so toned, you know, because he's like. Well, let me show you and he's like such a soft voice that I, it's like i'm like you know <laughs> and so it's like i would be like Woo, wake up wake up wake up so i just couldn't i couldn't get into it i just couldn't get into it but it's not it's not a knock him because he's he's good at what he does and all that kind of stuff and everything but it's just that um my attention spam it, it wasn't working you know so um yeah so you know, it, 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 it didn't do so good for me. So it was like, oh, well, it's, it's, it's fine. I tried. I tried. And it could be just digitizing in my thing, you know, and stuff. Hey, Marsha, how you doing? Um, Yeah, the expo that we are referring to is this one that's coming up. The original sewing and quilt expo that's coming up in um, Fredericksburg. And let me tell you something, guys, if, you know, even if you're not like here in Fredericksburg, look this up. Look this up, okay, because this does travel, okay? So I think, you know, I don't think it goes to every state in the United States, but I think that they do go to other places, okay? I 
I'm not sure if it's New York. I, I believe they went to Florida. I think it was Lake something, Florida. Oh, it doesn't say it in here. But if you go to their website, you'll see the different places that this, this expo travels to. And maybe it's somewhere close to you that maybe you can go. So, you know, just, you know, just to share, you know, if, if, if you, if you, you know, cause I, I know that, you know, not everybody's close to me and stuff like that, but you know, that way you guys can, can see it where, where it's close to you, you know? Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, Mara, what class are you referring to? Um, oh, there is a class on the organ. Okay. Um, on the needles. Okay. There is a class September 28th. And it's between 4.30 and 5.30. And it's a class that says, what needle do I use? That is the class that I was referring to. Um, yeah. So that seems to be interesting because they're, they're talking about different types of needles. But that's that's what I uh, meant, Monica. Um, you talk about the do you have to change the needles every eight hours. Yes. How would you know if you use a particular needle on a multi-needle? This is what I do, JC. Um, I change my needles. Um, and you you might look at me like I'm a little crazy and stuff like that. But the thing is, I do embroider a lot. I do. So Saturday is my needle day. Okay, <laughs> Saturday in the morning, I wake up and I change all my needles. Okay. Now, if I, there was a particular day that, like, let's say I do... Um, dinner napkins like i had an order of 180 dinner napkins for a wedding okay and i had to do that well it was one color so what i would do is of course i would you know i would change that needle quite a bit and sometimes what i would do is i would um you know put like if it's white thread i would just put needle one two and three is white thread and then like every hour i would just change the needle that i'm gonna use okay i'm gonna use the needle number one and then okay i used up needle number one now i'm using needle number two but they all have white thread you know um it is hard to tell exactly which ones you use for exactly eight hours okay because sometimes um in my situation, poor needle number one is usually the, the needle that's used the most. And then needle number 10 is sometimes used the least. Okay. But what I usually do is Saturday is my needle day, just like Friday is my administration day. So on Friday is when I do all my administrative stuff for two hours on QuickBooks to make sure everything is straight. Okay. And then Sunday, I mean, Saturday in the morning when I wake up, I always pull out new packs of needles and I change them all out. I change them all out and stuff. Because remember, it is important to change those needles because you do not want to embroider with a dull needle. A dull needle will increase the hole. And you, you know, they may not see it, but it, it, you want your designs to really look good. Okay. And it can, it can kind of, you know, mess up the design a little bit. I mean, it's not going to look as clean. You know, so I'm I'm very particular about that. And, you know, I'm just every every Saturday. They're all, you know, I, I put them in it. And, and another little tip for you guys, if you guys have pill boxes, when you when you have the old needles, put them in a pill like this. This is what I do. And I got I got to toss this out because you can see this is already full and stuff. But, you know, if if you know, I mean. Oh, pill, pill, uh, not boxes. This is a bottle, I think. Oh, I don't know. What you, you guys know what I mean? This thing, okay? Where, where, you know, I mean, I'm sure if you know, if you buy Tylenol or something like that. Oh, that was loud. If you buy Tylenol or something like that. These are all my old needles, okay? So, what I usually do is I open this up, I take the old needles, I put them in here. When this is full, then I throw it in the trash. I like doing this because that way nobody gets hurt. You know what I'm saying? Always think about the people um, that that work in picking up the trash and stuff like that. I just never want somebody to get hurt and get a needle pricked or something like that. I mean, it's just think about others. That's just that's just how I see it. Okay, so um, yeah. Um, 
Yep, add rhinestones, bling it out. That's true. You, yeah, I sometimes do that. I do add rhinestones to some of my embroidery, but I don't go like rhinestone crazy. I don't. I don't do. Um, I don't do like like the craft corrugate. She can do some rhinestone shirts. Let me tell you about that girl. She knows her rhinestones. Oh. Me, I'm just putting one little dot. That's all I do. I can just put one dot in there just to get that little bit of bling. Um, but that's as far as I go. Um. Let me see. Uh, uh, let's see what else we got in here. Um, do you have all the Mighty Hoop stations? I do have the, I have two Mighty Hoop stations. I have one for my multi needle machines and I have one for my single needle machines. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna go down a little faster and stuff like that. Debbie, how are you? Um, and if I skip somebody, didn't say hi, I'm sorry. Um, let's see, hey Margie, how are you? Um, when you are starting out, can it, it can be very intimidating. It can, Karen, it can. Um, you know, don't get intimidated though. It, it you know, just you're human. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We we all screw up once in a while. Uh, even when you see people that that you know act like they're perfect, trust me, they're full of it. They're not. They're not perfect. They made a mistake too. Okay. So you know, don't let don't let machines intimidate you. Don't let you know. Don't don't believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, okay? And if you screw up, ask for help. Ask for help. I mean, you know, there, there are going to be some people, like I said, that might help. And then you're going to have some people that, you know, don't. And, and don't worry about that. You Do your thing. Just do your thing. That's it. Believe in yourself. Um, let me see. I'll get your autograph one day, Jeanette. Oh. <laughs> hey, Trisha. Um, let's see. I received a blanket two weeks ago that I ordered. Everyone loved it. You do amazing work. Oh, thank you, Cece. I appreciate it. I'm glad you like the um blanket. Um, I love what I do. I really do. Um, there are lots of videos showing how to unzip files. There, there you go. Um, let's see. And it worked on a I used I used that video to get rid of some of the jump stitches and it worked. Awesome. See. Yeah, sometimes you get a bad file and you just have to fix it and stuff. Hi, I'm new. I got the Brother SC2000. Oh, congratulations, Jeannie. That's the um the latest and greatest. <laughs> that means yours have the automatic um jump stitching cut. Uh, it cuts the, the stitches automatically and you have Wi-Fi and stuff. But you know, I don't use the Wi-Fi. My, my 10 year machine has the Wi-Fi. I don't use it. I really love, I'm, I'm so addicted to using my, my uh, flash drive, and, and I, I always stick to that. Um, let me see, let's see, let's see. Um, da, da, da. Pat, Miss Shirley. Everybody's wishing her a happy birthday and stuff. Um, let's see. From the bank, it's a sign on Etsy, but it did not have a commercial license, and they closed her shop. First offense, five star seller too. Ah, uh, that's yeah. See, you have to be very careful with the embroidery designs. Make sure that you have that understanding. You know what I'm saying? You know that that you're looking at the licensing and everything. Oh, good night, Nancy, and I will see you tomorrow. Um, let's see anybody else? Let's see, I think I got it. Okay, what brand of sixty weight thread do you use, and where do you get it? Okay, um, Luna Design, I always go to All Stitch. Um, all, not, is it All Stitch? I think so. Hold on. I want, I want to double check to make sure that I'm telling you right. I believe so. I think it's, hold on. Yep, it is. It's all, go to allstitch.com under thread. Um, and there they have the 60 weight thread. And I'm going to tell you why I like getting it from them. I like getting it from them because they have a variety of the colors, okay? Some of the colors that they have on the 60 weight, they also sell it on the 40 weight. Now, I have a video on where I had worked on a patch. And on the patch, 
some of the area of that patch I had to do on a 60 weight and some of it I had to do on a 40 weight, okay? So it's important sometimes um, to be able to get a color in, um, in both weights. There might be situations like in that video where I did that patch where I needed that raspberry red in a 40 weight and a 60 weight. So to me, I always found that to be the best place to get your 60 weight thread because of the color options and stuff. So, and, you know, yeah, so that, that works for me and, you know, and, and that's where I've always gotten it. I have tried to look at other places to, um, to get 60 weight thread. I haven't been very successful in finding it. I know you could probably go straight to Madeira and probably order it, but I'm like, eh, I'll just go to all stitch. You know, I mean, it, the, 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 the price is comparable, so I'm just like, that's okay. You know, um, you know, so I just go straight there and I order it from there. Um, but you know, if I ever do find another place that has the 60 weight thread, um, you know, I'll let you guys know, I'll definitely post it on the Facebook group so that you guys have another place that you can get it if you, if you need to, but I usually get my 60 weight thread from all stitch. That's really usually where I go. Um, 40 weight thread. You can get that anywhere. Cause that's usually the, the standard embroidery thread. So you can usually get that, you know, very easily to find, but the 60 weight, sometimes it can be a little bit of a challenge, you know? So, um, yeah. Um, I'm trying to embroider a small font. If you are embroidering a small font, um, you want to design, one of the things I recommend, 65.9 needle, okay, the 60 weight thread, and slow down the machine. Don't go fast, all right? Because if you go fast, it, it can it can kind of mess it up, okay? If you want just to have fun, do it fast, and then do it again at a slower slower pace, all right? So that way you can kind of see how it goes. And hold on, I think I had something. Do I have it here? Hold on. Oh, that's a shame, because I had it. Um, I actually did a test stitch today. And where did it go? Hold on. Oh, I can't find it. That sucks. Okay. Because you asked me about it and I had it because what I did was I took a, you know where it went, Mello? Did you eat it? Did Mello eat it? I found it. Okay. All right, guys. This is a test stitch that I did today okay um remember i was telling you guys that i was working on some kids shirts for uh you know polo for school right this is 60 weight okay and then this is 40 weight so one of the things that um i did and i and i show this in the video when i did the the thing i'll I give you guys the close-up but here's a little sneak peek or whatever um 60 weight thread is thinner okay even though this is not really a small font, but what happened was when I looked at the sample shirt, it looked like the the thread was a little thin, right? So I, I said, let me let me stitch this out on a 60 weight thread, see what it looks like, and then I'll stitch it out on a 40 weight. One of the things that I noticed right away, and I'm and look right here, I want you to look at the letter F. And you know what? You're probably gonna have to see it in the video for you guys to see the difference, because I don't even think you guys are gonna be able to see this here, but. I'll explain to you. So in this F, in the video, you'll see it clear, okay? But you can see some spacing in the 60 weight because the thread, the thread is thin, okay? This is not a very small font, okay? This font is about, say about half an inch, something like that, right? And then when I went and I did it again on the 40 weight, which is down here, you don't see the spacing. Okay, so when I post that video and you guys look at it, because I do focus in so you guys can see that, because I thought this was a perfect opportunity to show you guys the difference between the 60 and the 40. Okay, sometimes people think, oh, you can just use 40. 
the 40 thread is thicker. It really is. And it makes a difference. It really, really, truly does. So just something to, um, took your advice on the 60 weight thread. Best advice ever. Ah, oh, you're welcome, Rihanna. Um, did I say your name? Ray, Ray Vetta. Ray Vetta. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, but yeah, you you really want to learn your um, your threads and the weights and when to use them. They make a difference. Trust me, especially with the small fonts. With the small fonts, it's a must. This is not small fonts. This was just something that I was playing around with because I wanted to see if if there was like a huge difference. And yeah, there is there there is a difference now. To a customer, would they be able to really look at this and say, oh, that doesn't look right? Probably not because customers don't do this, right? They, this is not their bread and butter. This is not something that they do. They'll probably look at it and go, oh, this looks nice. And they, they're, they'll probably be most likely content to it. But for someone that does this regularly, and this is something that you, you do, you're going to be looking at particular details that a regular customer is not going to be looking for, right? So, you know, and, and, you know, and what's funny too is when I go clothes shopping, you know, or I go into a department store and I see embroidery on a garment, um, and you guys probably are going to be end up doing the same thing, okay? I will pick up that garment and I will look at the embroidery and I actually sometimes even turn that shirt inside out because I want to see what stabilizer they used. Okay. Did they, did they use one sheet or two sheets of cutaway? And then also I like to see how clear the embroidery is. You know what I'm saying? That is something that you, you know, you, as, as because it's what you do, right? I do this. This is my business, right? So I, I know what good solid embroidery is supposed to look like, okay? So I, you know, it's stuff that you would normally pick up. Now, for someone who doesn't do embroidery, um, they may not notice a couple of things here and there, but you will because it's what you do. So anyway, but okay. Um, oh my God, you saw my problem. This is, it is not that the stitch is too thin. I'm using the thinner thread. Oh, I'm glad I helped you out, um, Herba Vera. Okay, guys. Well, it is pretty late. Um, you know, as always, I I go over time. Okay. You know, we start at eight o'clock and we always hang out to like <laughs> whatever. But, uh, and I do, I do know that I went a little long today on the announcements but it's just that i really wanted to talk to you guys about um the stuff with the facebook group and how i am cleaning that up and i'm trying to really keep that as a solid group and i really wanted to share the information about the uh, the sewing quilt show that's coming up and also the two videos that after i say goodbye to you guys i am going to start uploading and definitely you will see them this weekend for sure by tomorrow for sure if I don't fall asleep because it'll be like 10, 40 something and already um, Mel's giving me that eye. You know, he does. He gives me the eye. See, are you giving me the eye, Melo? Oh, look at that. He's ignoring me. Okay. Because it's night night. Is that why? Because it's night night. Look at that face. You're tired, huh? I don't know why. Because that supervisor don't work that much. But anyway. Look at him. All right. So anyway, guys, I will say good night to you guys. And, um, you know, as always, it's a pleasure to spend Friday with you. I hope you found this information helpful. And if you did, please give my video a thumbs up. And like I said, if you really like the content, please share with... um you know, with other folks and stuff and, you know, share the channel and stuff like that. I really would like to try to hit, get my subscribers up there. Um, my goal I was hoping was to probably get 20,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Um, I might, might not make it. I don't know, you know, but Hey, whatever, you know I mean? But I really do want to, um, you know, grow the channel more, share more information and help a lot of more folks out there. So guys, I hope you enjoyed um, our evening together and you got a lot of value out of it. 
And uh, please take care and please be safe and have fun sewing and embroidering, okay? So I will see you guys later and I'll see you guys on Friday again because, you know, I do these things religiously 8 o'clock every Friday, Easter Standard Time. So I will talk to you guys later, all right? Have a great one. Bye.